Welcome to Warcraft Reloaded, a podcast brought to you by Mash Those Buttons, covering World of Warcraft classic and its community. I am Bobby, also known as Blazing Bob, and today I am joined by Table Slam. How you doing? Almost forgot to cue the mic. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Glad to be back. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. And we also have returning Kipzo. How you doing? How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. And first time on the show, we have San Medina. 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 Wow, homeboys. <laughs> San Medina. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Sorry, I messed your name up a million times there. <laughs> um, all right. And I don't we... think you're allowed to say it right from, from now on. You have to say it wrong every time now. <laughs> Just like Nomregan. Nomeregan. Nomeregan. We had a, a drinking game when uh, Scotty J was on last where he had to drink every time I, I said no more wrong or, or or a different way. He got real drunk. Oh, uh, he was doing it too. He was he wouldn't even say anything. He just like he would hear it. It's, it's almost like he was like waiting and as soon as he's like, yeah, finally. <laughs> and then and then you guys started doing it to him when he was hammered. I was like, guys, we want to have Scotty back again. We you can't kill him tonight. We want him to wake up. <laughs> yeah, and um, no, no Mel to today, guys. We uh, she's working today, working long hours, and we were gone the entire weekend at Planet Comic Con in in downtown Kansas City. It's the largest, uh, it's the largest con in the in Kansas City. I think still it might, I don't know. It was at least a few years ago, but it was huge. Keeps getting bigger every year. We were seeing actors, stars, checking out cosplay, just having a good time Friday through Sunday. So we are all dead. I feel like I'm going to die, but it was a good time. It was worth it and had a had a blast. But now we're here to talk about World of Warcraft and I'd like to start out by thanking our tank patrons in Croxford, Turtle Whale, and we have a new one, Braxton. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I'd like to mention we stream live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash blazonbob. That's B-L-A-Z-Z-I-N-B-O-B. Um, if you'd like to join our our Discord, it's warcraftreloaded.com slash Discord. And uh, the new guides for Cataclysm on on Rested XP are up for, for, uh, for pre-orders now. Uh, if you're thinking of us while you're going to purchase a guide, please go to warcraftreloaded.com slash restedxp and uh, use our code reloaded at checkout. Um, we're going to start the show with the the comment of the week. Then we're going to do voice uh, voicemails. That's 816-866-1066 or speakpipe.com slash warcraftreloaded to leave one of those. We're going to see what everybody's been up to. Then we got a, a little news, and then we're on a time schedule, but if we get to it, we're going to talk about damage and stamina bloat and possible issues it's going to bring up in the future. So that's going to be the show today. And uh, yeah, why don't we get started with the man who created the comment of the week. Why don't you read us the comment of the week table? <laughs> oh, sure thing. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't type this. I get it. because I get it. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, Schneef. There's a lot of eyes in there. Schneef. Uh, completely agree with slowing down the phases. We will never have this exact game and meta again. Uh, fuck the retail brain that can't relax and enjoy what they have. I. This is an interesting comment. It's a weird. I don't know. I, I've most I've people. I agree with him. 
Most I do people agree, but I don't the thing I don't agree seems. with is so like most... the random like jab at retail in there. Like I don't get it. <laughs> Like, hey, I don't play retail, but like I don't. It's like Classic players will take any chance. I don't any get it. I just get. don't get it. I don't. I don't understand why people that play different versions of WoW have to like shit on each other. It's like so, so confusing to me. <laughs> I started. It's already been that way. This is gatekeeping city. That's the way it's been. If you're too old or too young to play WoW, you're not allowed to play WoW. Or like you, don't nobody cares about your opinion. It's always been that way. Like. If one guy says I've been playing since TVC, the other guy says I've been playing since since Bill Rat, so since Vanilla, so your opinion doesn't matter. It's been that way since private servers. Yeah, I don't know. It's just unfortunate that it's still that way. I don't know. It's I feel like they're they're such different games. They're totally different games to begin with. Like it's just for for people to be comparing them just because they are under like the same umbrella. I guess it kind of makes sense, but also it's it's still just unfortunate. But it's hate I brings do- hate. Hate, hate, hate breeds hate. Like when I first started the show, I had hung out with so many people that hated on retail. I just picked up and did it too. And then I realized I had to start saying, actually, can't hate on retail because I don't play retail and I have no idea what it, like what it is. I got, you know, schooled by multiple listeners. It's like, Bob, this is not how it works. This is not how it works. And I just take it hearsay and not done any research and i was like you know what i just gotta stop talking about it it's just not a game i play i don't know shit about call of duty either because i haven't played it for 15 years so yeah it's like it's like it doesn't mean it's a bad broccoli, game but i've never had broccoli like <laughs> yeah so yeah but, but anyway, i don't know I why with, people i definitely agree with the rest of the comment though like i don't well agree i can see where they're coming from i don't know if i necessarily agree with phases being like that much longer but I agree with the sentiment behind it of like, like slowing yourself down mentally anyway to like enjoy what we currently have. Cause there's so many people that are looking ahead and like, Oh, what's coming next. What's coming next. Like, how about like, just relax, <laughs> like enjoy what's in front of you, you know, play around with some stuff that you haven't tried before. This is like the time to experiment with stuff, especially in a version of the game that we're probably not going to get ever again. That's why I'm healing this phase. Like everybody knows me as like a, like a feral guy, but I've been healing this phase because I wanted to try something new and this is the right time to do that. So like, I don't know. I just, and I'm, I leveled a shaman. Never thought I'd be playing a shaman. That's been fun. I'll probably level a mage. I've never played a caster really. Uh, although technically I guess druid healing right now is basically a caster that heals, but whatever. Like I've never played a pure caster before thinking about trying that out. You know, like this is the time to mess around with that stuff. Like, Stop it and stop and smell the flowers, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, and everybody who listens to the show knows my 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 thoughts on it. But Kip, so sad. Either of you want to chime in on like, do you think the phases are too long? Do you think they're too short? Do you think we should be making when them I longer think I each got time? A bias here. Like, I I think I got a big bias as a content creator. I want the most faces because I can make it, make the most clickbait out of it. You know, at least like, you're honest. I can go, at least Rune you're phase honest. two are insane. Rune phase three is insane. Rune phase four is insane. I I, I never run out of stuff. I love but the I think honesty. This year is pretty packed because like we got Cataclysm at the same time. Like I know not everybody's gonna play Cataclysm Classic. I do like Cataclysm. So I think we got plenty of content with the pace we're going. We could even go a little slower. I don't think, I think it's fine. I do think that phase one was a little too long though, but. It, I, Maybe. It, yeah, it, for, see for me, it was just, it was long enough for me to fully gear four, uh, four characters. Like and do everything that they did, but I would have been fine longer or shorter. I just would have done another character. Like I think it's the difference, right? Is yeah. how many characters you were planning on doing. Yeah. If you're only sick with one character, I could easily see how Phase One would have dragged on for ages. If you're only playing one character, yeah. I just try to think about the other people. Like when I'm giving my my response, lots of the times my response is what I feel is best for WoW Classic as a whole. And everybody seems to think it's my stance, but I like I have so much time. Like I try to look at things and it's anybody who says they can see from somebody else's shoes, they are lying to them themselves and you. Nobody can. Nobody can have all of your life experiences and then make a choice based on that. We can try, we can get as close as we possibly can, but it's still a mile off from actually living in someone else's shoes. So I try, but you know, 
just like everybody else, I'm bad at it, but just keep trying. And I try to think about what will make the community best for all of us instead of just me, where a lot of people seem to just think me. For clarification, Sean, you say that we are not going to get to see your feet this stream? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm here. Wait a second, what did you say? Guys, I gotta go. <laughs> he wants to see your feet, Bob. We can't show oh. that on Twitch, though. That's not I don't think I can... Bobby, I don't, don't think do I can get yeah, up I don't here. think you're supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Twitch's version of Goldbine. Don't do it. What about No Hit Jerome? He used to put him behind his head. That's different. That's awesome. <laughs> that, was, that was weird. <laughs> that was great. Oh, man, it was great. Well, what about you, Kipso? Uh, I mean, I agree. I think for me personally, I uh, I would take much longer phases because, like, um, I leveled all the classes in phase one, and I'm going to do it by the end of phase two. So, like, it'd be cool to do more things with those characters personally, but um, phase two is already pretty dead. I think from, a, like... From Blizzard's standpoint, they need to they need to hype something up. Um, I don't know. They kind of just need to ditch this phase because they're obviously not putting like significant development resources into it. So if they're not going to fix it, they need to throw it away like as soon as possible because tons of people have already quit. There's like I don't know if you guys have seen like Reddit and stuff, but a ton of people like dinged forty and then they were like, okay, I'm done. Or if they weren't done then, they quit in the first two or three weeks before the leveling buff went out. And I don't know, those people aren't going to like come back. Um, they might not even come back for phase three. So it's like, I don't know. Might as well just put the energy into hyping something else up. You know what I mean? They do that with WoW expansions. Like they don't really fix the first expansion that you're playing. They just hype up the next one. And then they're like, look at this new thing that's coming. And then everybody jumps the back on for that. Fix the issues the old one had or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The EA strategy, you do not finish something and you go to the next one and make people forget. Yeah, well, pretty much, because they never fixed phase one, and then they just hyped us up for phase two, and then that's what we're doing now, so. <laughs> My brother in Christ, how come it's been like three weeks and we still trigger combat in Mexinir Thermaplug when we see him? Like, just make him a yellow mob. And also, how come when we kill him, we're I still know. in combat? It's been like, what, for a month? That part is That's rough. like a line of code. Well, yeah, I think the first from part red is to yellow. but the second part is because um, after you kill him, the like, whenever you kill the phase one thing, it's like the red threader or whatever, it walks off to the side, and then it's on the side of the fight, and then it just becomes a non-interactive, but it's still a mob, so it still keeps you in combat. I think that's what it is. Oh. I think they could fix it if they removed all those, but... Um... Again, they just don't really. There are they've already finished working on this phase. They're working on phase three, so they're not yeah. gonna really fix anything. Weirdly, I mean, they could like, just I kill them like... for one frame and summon them back, but they are not gonna do that. Yeah, true. But Weirdly, I, I think I, just, like... I saw it as like a vanilla thing, like <laughs> so much <laughs> weird janky shit like that in vanilla that I was just like, oh, "That's pretty vanilla. That makes sense to me." We got to kill another mob to get out of combat. Yep, that's vanilla for you. Vanilla mm -hmm. is the best way to explain away anything they do. It's just the vanilla feeling. It's the vanilla friction, man. It's old and broken. <laughs> yep, makes sense. Okay, yep. It's just, we're just following Vanilla the friction. Guys. So, so uh, last week we talked to the show. We saw a huge jump on Ironforge.pro from 181,000 uh, total people rating to the, the uh, next week up to 266,000. And I personally thought we were going to see another huge jump, but it only jumped 15,000 this last this um, this last week. So I was wrong about it jumping again. But it could be a it could be there are people that quit because are just decided not to raid because of um because of GDKPs. That could be part of it. Also another part could be People invested in, say, a rogue, and they're fucking pissed, and they're just like, well, I'm just going to take this phase I'm a bear. off. How do you think I feel? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, like, I am I literally am retiring my rogue, and I am fucking, like, I'm still going to PvP with him, and luckily, I was lucky enough to get gear to still be able to do that this time around, but it sucks just being a drag on your team, like, I mean, you're not really, you can beat anything, like, now with with rogues. We've been doing it since day one, but it's still, it sucks, man. Like, so, 
there's probably a lot of people like that that were like, forget this, I'll just wait it out. But I'm hoping that it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't mean we're going to keep seeing a drop as each phase goes on. So maybe Kipso's right. Maybe start hyping the next phase now. Get people to come back with the 100%, you know, to get ready yeah. for phase three because they've announced a date and we know when it's coming. And now everybody's like, oh, okay, I got to get some pre gear. I got to get, you know what I mean? Like, that could be neat. Could be a good idea. To be fair, like what you say, I don't want to spoil it too much because I know that's going to be one of the topics, but I think the XP buff is a huge factor into why there's so many more people. Because honestly, if I didn't get 100% XP buff, I would have never, never leveled an ult. I would have been healing like an idiot all day. Yeah, we will definitely but, talk about that. That's, that's, that's going to yeah. be a good one, man. All right, well... Um, thank, uh, thank you for your comment. Remember, leave a comment of the week. We, uh, remember, we're on a new YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Warcraft Reloaded. So help us out. Give us some, give us a sub there. Click, click that bell so you don't miss an episode. And, uh, yeah. What's everybody but up to in WoW Classic? Who wants to go? I mean, don't have to Taylor say everything. Taylor wants to go, I see him. <laughs> Well, oh no, sorry. I I decided this time that I would open a thing in Notepad to type up thoughts I had to bring up later, <laughs> so I don't forget them. Perfect. So I, that's perfect. what I was doing. I was typing that. Uh, all right, Kip. So, what have you been up to? Uh, honestly, I I have not really been playing all that much. I've kind of been like fixing my computer issues, my internet issues. Um, been working with an editor. So that's been pretty cool. That is cool. Um, you discovered yeah, something really. new just last night. It was a pretty cool thing you did this week. Yeah, pretty much. But um, I've just kind of been raid logging, I guess. I haven't really... Usually I'd be on like character number seven by now, but this phase has just been like... Yeah. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> well, tell us about what you found out last night that could make rogues a little bit more acceptable in in uh n number gun oh the trash skip thing do you want me to like explain it because um, you already know <laughs> well yeah yeah short for them and just kind of just kind of plug your video don't tell them everything because they need to go check the link of the dis the description for the full video okay well um yeah you can basically skip um what is it like three bosses worth of trash um just anything that has a teleporter next to it you can just stealth up to it and hit the lever and i feel like people kind of knew that you could do this but nobody's really been doing it so hopefully my video like hopefully it becomes meta and people watch the video and then do it more because then you kill less trash you know but um I don't know. I don't know if people really care at all. <laughs> I think people have just decided that rogues are bad, and that's just how it is this phase. I think community perception matters a lot more than reality. Um, yeah. Unfortunately. And the the numbers don't always tell the full story. There's a lot of people not using really what I would consider the only viable spec in this stage. I mean, I mean, you could probably do... You could probably do a weird spec, but you got to go down to the five of five in both of the poisons uh, bracket. So I don't know. If people are still trying to do combat. It kind of skews our 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 numbers pretty bad. Yeah, well, combat's good if you are like speed killing, but anybody who's speed killing is smart not to enough get to rogue. Not play rogue. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're playing warriors. I assume the reason the speed run people are using warriors is just mana. Is that right? Uh, I haven't looked like into warrior, it. pretty much. They are really convenient for like trash and stuff, like dealing with many mobs at the same time because they can just pick it up and they don't take much damage. That makes sense. Yeah, too. It makes everything easier. Plate, like them wearing plate this phase definitely helps yeah. a lot with their general tankiness. How many of them are actually wearing plate? I mean, you have a few items that are there in that that bis list, but. It's yeah, enough. They still have more half. armor. Like they still have more armor than other melee. Definitely, like, even with a couple of pieces of plate. Yep. I think you three piece the leather on shaman, and I don't know if rets do, but you definitely do on warrior because it just has way too much strength on it. Just kind of weird, but it makes sense because they had to make 
the string set accessible to feral and so the only way to do that would be cloth or leather or leather but then like rogues don't really benefit from the string so it's kind of awkward yeah there's a little benefit but it's not like great or is it one to one for ap for rogues yep yeah so it just has regular ap on it compared to two ap per strength yep and whereas as has ap crit dodge armor you know like it's just got so much stuff that it adds to you so yeah and then for a class like shaman where you basically just have like warrior stats it's it's like super weird and the three set for the male thing is terrible the like mana proc so it's just like i don't know why they designed it like that to be like i don't know a lot of a lot of questionable de decisions like the minus stamina on the caster set and then you can't turn it in for tokens it's kind of like I wish that they wrote like developer notes on that stuff as to like why it's like so quirky and weird. But I was guessing PvP. I was guessing like they're buffing the casters and they're like, uh, well, we don't want them to blow everybody up in PvP. So if they do decide to do this, they're going to be a glass cannon type of deal. But I could be wrong. That's just my guess. Speculation. Yeah, it could be that or like some kind of RP flavor thing because it drops off the bosses. And I also don't get why it's not like um, like there's four bosses that drop tier. It would make sense in my mind for like one boss to drop the boots and then one to drop the pants and then one to drop the chest and then the last boss randoms one. But it's just random all four times. And the same thing with the irrigation. Like you can get f like three irrigation chests in one run. Like how, how could you we use did. all those? We got at least yeah, exactly. two. It, it might, was it three just last night? Was it three? It was three. Damn. No, yeah, no that that's not the other weird. I don't Ooh. know. It was two last night. <laughs> I was just figuring it was like a vanilla thing because like there's random items in vanilla that are like minus to a stat or whatever and, and stuff. So I'm assuming that they they put that in as like a like a throwback to like the OG vanilla item design and stuff like that, which like makes sense from like maybe what they were trying to do like creatively with Zod. But like to a modern player sensibilities, it seems kind of not it doesn't make that much sense from a modern perspective when you think about it from like the og vanilla perspective it makes a little more sense it's just a question of whether or not it was necessary to do that i mean i mean i think it's cool. i agree with the premise but i don't get why you can't like get the token and then opt in to the minus stam why is it like it just drops off the bosses i think it's I don't yeah know, it's that is weird. confusing why the irradiated stuff isn't also a token piece like why why that one is the one that drops directly from the bosses yeah that is kind of confusing and i do i agree with you also but like why isn't it you know one boss drops a specific token instead of random because you get like four boots and like nobody wants the boots or whatever and then yeah, you feel like yeah. it was a waste of loot for the entire lockout at least it's not bfd do you want more mail gear guys oh true. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah that's better than the just all of the tier just dropping and then you just never i think i got like the tier helm and then just never the other two pieces ever you see them drop like once and eight people roll on them i never got the I helm don't have my three piece yeah it just reminds me of like back in vanilla classic like in molten core and blackwing glare seeing only druid and warlock tier when you need like everything else and you're only seeing warlock and druid gear and like they've even put Shaman gear in the alliance yeah like i think they've they've they fixed that after like a couple lockouts but like but still like the point remains like just getting a bunch of shit that you don't need and it just feels like it was a waste of a lockout or whatever like it's they they had the right idea with like moving to a token system for nomer i just hope they kind of tighten it up a bit and understand where the pain points are and, and improve it for the future like I'm okay. Like it's it's like the shit that's been like frustrating or annoying or whatever about phase one and phase two so far. I'm okay with that stuff being that way as long as they can take the lessons from it and move forward for an improved experience in the future. But if it stays messed up the whole time, then it like just stays annoying and frustrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, the uh, uh, you ubiquitous in chat says the. They did at least get the like one token for all, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so like, like having it switch between classes is just like ugh. that's definitely an example of like them taking a lesson from phase one forward into phase two, where they were like, okay, yeah, that is unfortunate that you have no male wearers in the raid and only male gear uh, drop. Like that sucks. So doing the token, the tokens usable by anybody of any armor type is great. Like that's a great idea. But like Kipso was saying 
having it be a random chance for any of them off of any of the last four bosses is like a little weird. like one step forward two or two steps forward one step back sort of situation yeah it can be really really un unlucky well, i also think it's kind of like anti vanilla like vanilla is the the expansion of like okay i need this boss for this thing i need my tear boots from Gehennis or something like not like Oh, I hope they randomly drop off anything. You know, I don't know. Um, it just seems kind of, I don't know, not very well thought out, I guess. I think it's, I think, okay, so I see where you're coming from. You're, you, you're not really a fan of the token then, right? Like, you don't think the token's vanilla. Is uh, that I, what think, you're I think it's a good idea. I think long term, if this was like the end game, I think it wouldn't be a good idea. I but agree with you there. I do agree because with we're you leveling there. up. We should they should honestly just shovel us gear because like it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like you might see like two or three battle chickens this whole phase, and if you're in a hardcore guild, you're gonna be farming it the next two phases. You're gonna go back and do Nomergon. Like I don't think I've seen that? one. I don't think I've seen one chicken. Yeah, I've never seen one either. But um. At most, you probably have like three or four by now. Like, if you get insanely lucky, you could have like maybe like ten or eleven by the end of the phase. But, um, I mean, if you really care, you're gonna go back and farm them, just like uh, people did with um, the trinket from the, BFD. Yeah, and the trinket from um, what is it? The armor pen one from AQ. Yep. Oh, yeah. We're farming that in TBC. People were farming viscidus for the uh, scarab brooch. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like that too, like the armor pen one and the healing one. People were still farming that stuff. I remember mm -hmm. the tier two set for Shaman was best in slot for most of TBC too because the two piece was like another bonus of chain heal. So yeah, I had to carry people in Onyxia. We were still, uh, we were still farming the uh, armor pen trinket for a few different people um, in Wrath, and like it's funny because they were doing it on stream, but they were clipping through the floor. But I don't think Blizzard cares because it was old content, right? It was from two expansions prior. Whereas, like, if they had been doing that shit during AQ being the main raid, that shit would have been banned. Bam, boom. Oh, yeah, they would have nipped that for sure. But in Wrath, there were, like, two, three people going and clipping down to go try that, to try to get that, that trinket once a week. Crazy. When it comes to the token stuff, I guess I have a little bit of a different viewpoint on it than um, than than you or or uh, or Kipso, because it's it's like the the th the way that I'm looking at it is they there was information that was I don't know if it was leaked or announced or what about how they're going to be adding new sets for the specs that didn't previously have set bonuses for like tier one two and three and that's a huge loot table 2.5 that that's, that? that's a good point too that's a huge loot table to yeah. deal with so that's that alone makes me think that it would be a good idea for them to keep the token system very good point i didn't even think about that because otherwise you're going to have like there's what there's four sets for druid alone there's going to be four sets for shaman there would be two for priest two for warrior you know what i mean like that you're tripling the loot tables if yeah, it would you be don't like, if you don't uh, do tokens it would be like voa voa is like that in wrath where you just yeah. like go and then you're like okay double feral druid and then you just leave <laughs> or like okay triple frost mage awesome does anybody hear pvp and there's like yeah. one mage and he's like nope and you're double like, elemental pvp okay. gear cool thanks yeah like, nice and i guess it is seasonal too so even the end game is gonna be at a at a like a I would assume a accelerated rate. So I guess, yeah, I guess I just have to kind of wait and see, but I do agree with Kip. So it doesn't kind of feel vanilla in the end game, but in vanilla, I would have taken the token thing for any of the set pieces going, you know, even through dungeons, like just because I only run, you know, with leveling, you should only run a dungeon once or twice. I mean, they did have tokens, though, in AQ and Max. I like meant for tier. leveling up. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. You're right, though. They had the, yeah, they had the tokens that were like, uh, so, yeah, was it? Yeah, Nax was the pain of the butt one. Oh, my God, that was horrible. Yeah, because Nax, it was like mats, too. It was like the the, <sighs> the, the, the depleted armor pieces and like the runes of 
Frost or whatever they were called. Yep. Yeah, hopefully we get some stuff. QOA stuff on that. That's like, um, they made it so we can't kill ourselves with rank 14. They need to fix like that and um, like Scarab Lord deputizing and uh, Dilithid rep farming and stuff like that. They need to make it so we don't literally stay up for six days straight whenever that stuff comes out. You know what? Like, okay, so I do have kind of a, that brings me to kind of a beef about the, I do like what they've done to improve the rank 14 stuff. I do like it gated. I do like, you know, uh, that you don't lose stuff, but I still think it's archaic that there's a level up bar, but say rank three, you could PVP for 8,000 honor in a week. And that does nothing for you, but you get 11, you get 11,000 and now you're level three with 80% bar, right? That's how, and the only way you know how that's going to work is if you have the add on ranker, right? So I had a friend who came back who has been ranked three all of phase one because they just, they were getting six to 9,000 uh, honor every week. It was like, I don't understand why I'm, my bar's not getting any bigger every week. Like, why couldn't they have just made it so you just get what you get in that week? I don't, like, that part was kind of weird for, for me because they fixed everything else, but you still have the weird half quarter level thing. I would guess it's probably just coding limitations, like um, the shaman weapon enhancements. They like tried to fix it, and they realized that they couldn't, and they were like, okay, we don't have time to figure out how this is supposed to work, and then they just left it like that. Time means one afternoon because it's Blizzard. <laughs> oh, it's Yeah, pretty much. You were supposed to say it's friction, Bob. It's friction. The vanilla friction, that's right. <laughs> it's the new F word. Well, I was just kind of curious about that but all in all i'm i'm happy with the thing but if anybody doesn't have ranker like you should get it just because you especially because you could buy 200 and f okay so i'm gonna make it easy you could buy with one silver coin from stv you could buy 1000 honor so basically at the end of each week i look at my tunes and i'm like oh I'm only 3,000 honor from, what's it called? I could wait a little bit more on my, my mount. I'm just going to spend those coins so I make sure I get some sort of progress for this week towards rank, you know, ranking up in PvP. So you guys should definitely get that add-on. It it I don't see how you would do it without it. So if you still did the add-on of the week, ranker would be add-on of the week all weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really, well, no, it would be weak ores, but... Still, well, yeah. rank is a really good one. There's probably a weak aura that does it too, to be honest. Probably. Yeah. If there probably isn't, you could probably make API. one. <laughs> yeah. It's all API polls, so they probably you could probably figure it out. Well, uh, what have you been up to, Table? Uh been playing Sod and Wrath, raiding on two tunes and Wrath, both feral. Uh raiding on Sod on my druid healing. And did the my first Nomer was that last night? Yep. On my shaman, uh, two handed enhance with the staff of Jordan did not not very good parse wise, but was keeping up with people damage wise. Even though the rest of my gear was pretty much hot garbage, um, it's been fun. Like it's shaman's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying the uh, like the sort of support role aspect of it, like timing totem drops and stuff like that. Like pre-dropping totems before combat getting a drink in so you can still start a full mana with like max duration on totems and knowing when to move them and and all that stuff has been pressing one ball and going afk and still holding aggro <laughs> yeah were yeah, you uh much. were you a little bit bummed that your first run in nomer you had this chad content creator named kipso that skipped all the trash <laughs> i didn't even <laughs> think about that until just now i didn't that didn't bother me at all <laughs> that was that was cool I was just um, curious if you wanted to see how you fared against trash. The only, I mean, it was, I, I got a little taste of it. You know, it's, a, it's definitely, it's a different, slightly different skill set with like knowing, cause like there are weak ores you can get that are, that are, that'll give you a countdown for like when fire Nova is going to pop, but like having the like presence of mind to be able to estimate when the mobs are going to die so you can drop a fire nova in time that it'll actually hit everything before they die like that's a new challenge which has been interesting 
uh, knowing when to drop searing versus magma, remembering to drop searing, like, <laughs> <laughs> like all this other stuff. Like, is I got a totem timer week or now, so that's like made it a lot easier. Uh, but it's just been, I don't know it's been it's been cool to see the game from a slightly different perspective. It's just unfortunate that I my schedule doesn't allow me to raid on that character consistently. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's been fun. But I'm you're also doing. You're also doing two handed stuff in phase two at some point because like healing's been fun, but I definitely miss feral. For oh, sure. I'm sure. I'm like, sure. I definitely had no intentions of like abandoning feral or anything like that. I just wanted to try out healing. I feel like I've done enough of it now to like understand, like have that perspective of what it's like to heal a raid, <laughs> what it's like to keep people alive that are seemingly trying to die, like <laughs> that, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I, you can't. I, I can't stay away from Feral for too long. Otherwise, we didn't adult. choose the healing life. The healing life chose Saf. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it's been fun, though. I've, I've been having a lot of fun with phase two so far. And um, like I was saying earlier, I'm thinking about leveling something completely that I've never played before just to see what it's like. Well, and I was pointing out, you're also going against the meta with the shaman because you're doing two handers instead of dual wield. Yeah, I wanted to level a shaman anyway. But when that Stafford Jordan dropped and I won the role, I was like, okay, like I'm going to actually level the Shaman and he's going to be a two hand and he's going to use the Stafford Jordan. Even though I know for sure dual wield is better, I just wanted to play two hand with the Stafford Jordan. Like how many other Shamans out there have a Stafford Jordan? Like I got I to gotta be the one, <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> yeah. How many other Shaman have it that didn't swipe? That's what I, that's what I would have done because we have proof he didn't. It dropped on my stream. It was beautiful. <laughs> It's funny because like every time somebody sees me with it, they assume that I got it from like GDK, GDKP gold or bought it off the auction house or something like that. And it's like, because that's the majority of people you see with one, they didn't get it themselves. They didn't nope. see it drop and win the roll or anything like that. They bought it. You know 99% I mean? of us that see it drop would be like, I'm selling that shit right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're kidding. And then I'm, and I'm the one, the one dummy who didn't sell it, who decided to level an alt specifically to equip it <laughs> i think that's cool i think that's really cool i think how uh, much is a pendulum of doom in money right now how would you guess oh dude i don't even i, I haven't even, even looked, looked. On the auction house. i don't even know how much gold it's going for but i might if it drops i might just like i'm gonna be working on the hunter pole in um olderman all this next week so we'll see if i can uh if one drops, we'll see if I have the balls to put it on or sell it. Or just keep farming to get a second one, sell one, equip the other one. <laughs> it it just kind of depends because I am really kind of like low on money this time around. Uh, so we'll see. But I mean, if I get that farm to work, I, sh I should just flop to the other side pretty quickly. Um, uh, my guess is it's going to be nerfed Tuesday because that's what I'm going to start working on it. That's my guess. That would How could they one. nerf it? Like, um, uh... They would nerf, like, all right, guys, we're going back to the mobs warp to you uh, dungeon thing, or the mobs can no longer be be um, be slowed thing that they did in uh, SOM. Uh, so I after... think that's, that would take too long for them to do. I don't know. They let mages do their thing in phase one. They're probably just letting hunters do their thing, and then... I don't know, maybe nerf it somehow after that. As far as I know, that was like an anti-boosting thing. And people who are going into Oldman aren't doing it to boost. They're doing it to farm. So, And um, I don't plan on boosting anybody either. Well, well friends, you can do it to boost. Friends, I will yeah, totally can. let just walk in. But I don't, I'm not, there's no way I'm taking the chance charging somebody and having them give me gold anywhere close to coming in or out of an instance. I'm just not there's doing just it. There's just way easier dungeons to boost people in than Oldman. So... That's what that's what makes me think they wouldn't do anything to Oldman. Like if anything, they would do it to like Calf. No, either either way, happy to help out buddies, but boosted's not my not my thing. Don't get me wrong, I've gotten boosted many times, but I didn't feel good about it. I felt a little dirty while I had my endorphins playing my other character, working <laughs> up the other character while it's going, but Still felt a little dirty. Still felt a little dirty. But yeah, I'm not going to boost anybody just for fear of, not for, not because I'm some great guy, just because 
fear of getting banned because people are getting banned all over the place. It scares the shit out of me. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Like they do, like they, instead of not allowing you to trade gold inside the raid, we watch the, like it would have been stopped GDKP in, a, in the spot. They, they just ban people that trade gold. Just not allow them to trade gold. That's it. Yeah, like bringing extra consumes and selling them to your raid members or whatever. Like that gets, it must be some sort of automated system that like anytime a trade for gold happens inside a raid, they assume it's your GDKP and it just automatically does its thing. Like I highly doubt there's a person like looking at it and being like, oh, that's GDKP. He gave him two gold. I'm hoping if the, if the automated system worked correctly, like when somebody gives me something in raid that I forgot, I hover over it. TSM tells me hour and 45 minutes ago, the average price was this on the auction house. I give them that times, you know, whatever they gave me with a little bit extra. It should read into it that that's a, like a straight up fair trade. If they're going to be using automation, it better at least see that. But from what I understand, it's a like there is a threshold of some sort that you hit to where it kicks in. But it's it like still scares me to like, death. I, I was just like thinking of things like why why would they have it automatically detect gold but not items like that was my first thought was like why why can they tell why why do they automatically assume it's gdkp if you're trading gold in a raid even if the other person puts like a potion in the trade window or whatever and it's probably because if they made it work that way you would have people being like okay here's two gold in exchange for your lesser mana potion and then a different trade window opens with the piece of gear and no gold exchanged it's like they could you know get around it that way so like they probably just blanket was like no gold trading in in raids yeah well they already did well, that to in be like... fair like just put a minimum amount of gold like you think people are buying the epic axe for five gold that's it well that that is what they do it's just like if you do something like that that's unusual, it gets flagged, and then they just follow around the flagged gold to confuse people. So, like, if somebody, like, if I go into stockades and then I teleport to 000XY Z axis, and then I just start fly hacking around, all the gold that my characters farmed could be flagged, and then I could mail it to people, and then they just let it go in the ecosystem. And then if you get caught with that flagged gold, and the same thing with, um, like high ticket items or stuff on the auction house but to, they did that in like classic and then to avoid it if you bought like um if you bought gold they the bots would email they would send you like a mana potion in the mail or like just random junk items or like just like a gray item in order to like subvert the system into thinking it's some kind of fair trade and it doesn't really work all that well i don't know what their system is for um like fraud detecting that i guess but people really don't mail each other gold without cod all that off like if you were going to buy a staff of jordan from me you wouldn't just mail me the gold and then i mail you the staff of jordan you would just use the cod button right mm -hmm. so it's pretty easy to detect what is and isn't human yeah well i heard a lot of people um friends that had bought gold said that they would send it was just a like a it must have been a note written for them but it was just like Thank you for the the GDKP last night. Sorry you couldn't stay for your cut or something like that. Yeah, and I think that's what they do now because that's what Gargle sends out automatically. And the bots have like add-ons where they can just automatically paste that text. Gargle is so good for the software stuff we've been doing, but it scares me using it, man. Because <laughs> it's... <laughs> uh, just because of the... Yeah, I don't know. But I stream yeah, almost so every bit of gameplay I do, so... But it doesn't matter. Like, even if if something were to happen to me, I would send that shit in, but it wouldn't matter. Like, the automated system isn't going to see my stream or watch my stream. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it still needs, like, human intervention. Yeah, yeah. and, you know, everybody's like, oh, well, all the creators know, know devs and stuff. The devs aren't going to do anything for you about that. Like, th like, they have strict policy not to get involved in that at all. Like, that has nothing even to do with them. So no matter how many of them like you or your friend or whatever, they're not going to help you with that. They're not going to give you, like, everybody thinks they give, like, insider info. They don't. They're not going to get fired from their job to tell, uh, you know, someone they like something that's coming up. 
It doesn't happen, guys. There's no sex in the champagne room. <laughs> Just letting you know. Just letting you the know. Cosby room. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh oh. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh man. I was gonna make a joke about the freezer that was in that room, but I can't anymore. <laughs> oh. oh god. Oh, it does. don't do it. Don't do it. Don't fall into the joke. Yeah, so, oh. I, I, so I agree Anybody with, uh, with no, Kipso about it. how uh, tokens being from specific bosses feels more vanilla than just random. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sam? What have you been up to this uh, this week? Oh, so what's it here? Mm -hmm. I, I, I can uh, just go well with the, with the motions. Well, basically, I am leveling my shaman right now because I, I started playing a bear in this tier and people were like why can't you just be normal and tank with a warrior and i rolled a warrior and people were like why can't you just be normal and tank with a shaman so here i am <laughs> oh, i have an emote for that hey man so yeah the first I, raid I you came not on very happy about the balance you were able to take you know moderately okay with no sh with no shaman no wind wind fury no help and threat you did okay with the warrior then when you had one, you did just you did just fine. So, I think warrior's still fine. Oh, it's so much better than the bear, but like, it's 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 not very fun to know that there's a class that just presses one button and has the best AOE threat and single target threat. And if they want a DPS, they hold aggro off you whether they want it or not. Mm -hmm. It's the same spec, right? From what I understand. Yep. They just changed out some runes. Enhancement is stupid. It's just wild how like so like I leveled. Uh, you know, I've leveled many druids on hardcore, and I almost always tank dungeons. And bear threat in dungeons is ridiculous. Like, a single maul will, like, you can maul an enemy one time, and if it crits, you can ignore that enemy for the rest of the trash pack, and it won't get ripped off you. Like, bear threat is insane in era and vanilla, but yeah. for some reason, it's dog shit in sod. Like, I don't understand how it can flip so drastically from one to the other. Well, you know why. How could they decide Lacerate to synergize of Mangol, and we are not allowed to have Mangol and Lacerate in the same character? Yeah, like, you need a feral really DPS cool. druid to even be able to do this in threat. And if you get Lacerate in a raid where mobs take less damage from bleeds, you suck anyway. And Mangol is like your snap threat and you don't have it, so you have to choose between like decent normal threat or snap threat. Uh, they they destroy the druid. They like it's like they they saw the abilities of Rato Elite King and then spent like a minute thinking, why is this here? Why what's this supposed to do? Yeah. It's just copy it. True, it's a tough about one, that, man. The mangle and lacerate thing, like before before Saud even launched, I was like, yeah, dude, bear, bear tanks are going to be weird. You need, that's the only tank that need, I think I was saying this on, I think it might've been Scott and Go's podcast, how like bear tanks cubicle are chat. the only, yeah, cubicle chat, give it a watch. Um, it's the only tank class that requires support from another class to be able to play at maximum effectiveness. You need a feral DPS in there putting Mangle up for Lacerate to have like good threat. <laughs> Like it's it is a lot of threat. Like single target bear threat isn't bad on like a fight like Grubbis or like Viscous Fallout, where it's not a mechanical, so there's no bleed reduction or whatever. Actually, no, Viscous Fallout might not count because it's it's an elemental and they weren't able to bleed before. So this the bleed reduction might still be active on a Viscous Fallout. Not sure. Haven't seen a bear tank yet. But at least for Grubbis, Grubbis is human. Wonder why. Yeah, right. But Grubbis is humanoid, so like you would think that on Grubbis, and in particular, that would be the one fight where like feral tanks would actually be like good, and they are like the single target threat is decent on on Grubbis, but like why you know you don't you're not going to bring a tank for one fight, you know what I mean? Like you got to think about the whole raid. Yep, we've been. Uh, Stan also started raiding with us this uh, this week, and. Um... The way our raid team works is I am the facilitator. I'm the, I don't know, like I'm the guy that builds the raids, gets everybody there, does, you know, like, like checking to see if Shack we can get corner. this, grab it. I was, I, I, I get everything to get the raid going. And then I have this great guy, uh, move, uh, movement who, um, who raid leads. So he leads the raid. And so we're a great team, right? But I feel so sorry for Move because he's got like a 
group that's half content creators and we love to talk <laughs> and he's just <laughs> trying to give he's trying to give directions and they're just like just talking he's about everything <laughs> i feel so bad for him but i am so thankful for him but yes and started to to um to um raid with us it's been a good time too well for me i already told you what i've like i basically this week just like did did raids and went to Planet Comic Con. I kind of got a, like a break from Sod, although it's sad that I was having so much fun and still thinking about playing Sod. But it's good to get a break at times, and now I'm super energized to go back. Problem is, I still have Final Fantasy VII. I have to put a little time in it every day, and uh, this, this is why it's okay if the phases are a little bit long, guys. There's other games. Like, you know, instead of, don't you guys have phones? Don't you guys have other games? <laughs> <laughs> I got play Age of Empires too, but nobody wants to play with me. Oh. It's a Latin American thing. You wouldn't get it. Wololo. Oh, I love it, man. Wololo, indeed. Yeah, I haven't played it in a long time, but I, dude, I love those. I love those types of games. Want to play? Uh, uh, not right now. <laughs> 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 Damn. I love the... Uh, uh, promoting his uh, Warcraft Rumble Guild. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, same, I mean, same. that's fun. That's fun. I have a good time with that, and I like the fact that you can. It's like Clash of Clans is what screwed me on mobile for a long time because if you wanted to play more than one attack every hour, you had to pay to boost your bases so they would make troops faster. And like, you don't have to do that. In this you can just play as much as you want, you know. And I think that's freaking cool. And so I'm cool with it. I went to log into it to join your guild on there and it had been so long since i opened the app on like the day it launched like i installed it and played it like the day it launched and maybe like the next day and i pretty much haven't played it since and i went to open it and there were so many updates i was like never mind i'll do it later <laughs> that's what <laughs> happened to me gone. so hearth so i quit hearth hearthstone and then a year or two later they came out with the hearth with the hearthstone classic and i just wanted to try it but I opened it on my iPad, and 20 minutes later, I'm still clicking through the free shit they gave me, all the different advertisements, and I was just like, I didn't even get through it. I was just like, never mind. Never mind. Like, I'm not going to do game? it. Like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I get that. It it actually was really, really bad for me. Like, it just showed me everything, and it just kept going. And I was just like, okay, I just wanted to try this new thing out real quick. But So I get that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, so that's all I've been doing, and... I did get my warrior to level 40, um, so I did do that, and um, I had a good time with that. I need to get him his, his um, runes and stuff, but that'll be something for, for this week, and yeah, that's all I've been doing. Let's uh, move into... <laughs> time for the news. All right, so the Cataclysm beta is now live. If you were... One of the lucky ones to get it. You can play live. Has anybody played the beta? They won't let me in. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't get in. Damn. I feel sad. I, I, to play, though. I wish I, I could transfer mine. I just don't... Uh, I'm having too much fun with... If Final Fantasy VII wasn't here, I would be checking it out more, but I'm having to split my time pretty roughly with Seven and Sod. Yeah, I mean, the creators just, we just get one. What a waste. I, I know, I know. I wish I could, like... <laughs> okay, I knew they were telling the past, you this, this favors. In the past, they they would give us, like, a like a, like a plus one type of deal. And I'd always get, like, the smartest person in my guild who I knew was going to really bug, bug test. It used to always be Corpse, a uh, guy from our... Our um, guild in Vanilla, a good uh, good buddy of mine, and he's been on the show before too. But I knew he would test things. He would send in bug reports, so I would, you know, su suggest him because I'm just not a huge beta guy most of the time. So I just go in and test the raids basically when those come out. That's the only thing that really gets me, like the leveling stuff. If I'm really bored. Which at the end of each expansion I was, so I did beta test, but now I'm in sod. Like I, I want to yeah. go PvP rather than go do that. Like this is on a time scale here. 
I saw Crooks find do. a couple bugs in real time. He was playing yesterday. <laughs> it was like a you know, like the Morshan Rampart, Northern Barrens, right before the border of Ashenvale. Or normally like the you pick up the quest to like bring the, the stuff to the Ashenvale outrunners and all that stuff. Like that area where is the Warsaw Gold Defender is. Yeah, is it all see I don't know of the new Azeroth. Is it all changed? No, it's, it's still the same thing. Like that area is still there. Like the guard tower, like where the Warsaw Gold uh rep vendor is, like okay. that area. He was there was like I can't remember if they added a flight path there, but there was a quest that he was turning in there. And it like there was an NPC he was trying to sell and repair at an NPC, and he like clicked the the option to bring up the like in the vendor menu, and it just wouldn't come up. And he was like, okay, so that doesn't work. And then he like started to walk away, and then all of the NPCs in that area just despawned, and he couldn't do anything. And he was like, what? So he walked into Ashenvale, and like the zone transition happened, like the zone changed, the music changed, the lighting changed, all that stuff changed, and then he came back into the Barrens, and they were all back. So it's like. It's like, okay. It's a good thing they do this uh, bug testing. <laughs> I, I think they introduced like, layering in Cataclysm. Uh, was it layering or was it? Uh, I think it was sharding. Right? Sharding, right? It was like the the first bit of sharding was was Cat. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yep. Because like Wrath was when they did phasing, and then they continued on into Cata and made it sharding. Instead. Yeah, and phasing is not layering. Phasing is when. The yeah, world around you changes on, based on your quests and yeah, yeah, the progression. Of everything. It's turned out to be kind of a bitch to like to have your friends on the same one. That kind of sucked. Yeah, it was awful. You would always like spend like an hour on Thoughtbot and you'd just be like, Oh, you're on part two of seventeen, I'm on fourteen. Could you catch up real quick? And uh just so you could see your friend and like trade him something. It was the worst if, like, there was a couple of random bugs that I remember from original Cata where, like, um, in original Cata, you would start questing in a zone, and a lot of times you would either level out of the quest line or whatever, where, like, you were, they were, they all went green or, like, even gray. So you're like, all right, whatever, I'll just go to the next zone um, without finishing the quest line. And then, like, later on, when you finally get to, like, Twilight Highlands, like because you didn't finish the quest in like Stone Talon or whatever, it like jacked something up with Twilight Highlands and like you couldn't like stuff wouldn't load in or whatever. So like, I mean that that's was... kind of something that's on my to do list. That's kind of something in Classic too, because I want to use rested XP, but I've skipped all around because I've done all this different stuff. So there's all kinds of quests that'll be on rested XP later that I don't have mm. access to. So I'm I'm literally gonna start from like the barons on each tune and just go through and grab the, you know, the few things I didn't do at different times. And then at pre-questing, I did like half the quest you're supposed to do in the guide. And I'm just going to do that. So I make sure I'm ready for, you know, what's to come, you know? So I th the classic go to booty Bay, turn in goblin sponsorship. And you're like, Oh, I'll go ahead and skip that. And then you're mm -hmm. skipping half of uh, early STV. Dozens and yeah. dozens of quests. Mm -hmm. Remember crazy. that old Wow Crandor video where they were, he was like ripping on Cataclysm back when it was like current and he was like, uh, did you find Mancrick secret lover yet? No, sorry, I gotta kill my elite planes, plane striders today. It's, it's kind of like that. They just barely changed uh, like most of the quests because they had to redo the zone, but most of the quests are the same until like level 40-ish. That's when like they had a lot of quests on Failwood, a lot of quests on like the later zones. When can you fly in Kata? Like what level uh, can think, you fly? Is it 40? I think flying is like not until much later. Like when you get closer to the new level cap. Really? 85. I think it's 81, but I, I I don't know. I haven't played a private server in Canada in a long time. I know that there are areas that that's kind of cool. Kind of need flying to get to. Um, but I can't remember if it was one of those things. You know how like in in Wrath, where like once you got uh Northrun flying on your main, you could buy the the buy an account item to send your alts and stuff like that. I can't remember if it's a similar thing in Canada or not. It's been too long. It's like Argatand and Chat and NYTYS N T Y S are saying they think it's sixty and it's one hundred and fifty percent speed mounted sixty. Oh, okay. So like epic flying is is later than maybe, which that would make, make sense because you're later. going to 
you're at that point supposed to go to to uh, outland where outland. you can fly. Yep. Yeah. So that makes sense. I, don't know, I just remember there was a lot of people that were like upset at flying in Azeroth back then, but that was like the whole reason they did the revamp anyway. <laughs> they were like, yeah. oh, we can't let people fly over this dog shit texture. I don't know. I do I remember mean, like... I did fly over all of Azeroth once uh, after I hit max level in Cataclysm. Like, I did think that was kind of neat, but I don't remember what I, do, I don't remember anything except for the um, water in. Uh, South of the Barrens and the big, the big new butt crack through the the Barrens, the canyon. Water south of the Barrens, what? Yeah, yeah, a thousand needles. They split because it was oh, too big. Right, right, right. Yeah, th that's the only thing I remember about the changes. That and Org all jacked up. Oh yeah, I hate. Oh yeah, Garros or... best war chief. Uh, like not not an apple for question, guys. Like in one year he built the whole city again. <laughs> what did Tral do for us? I don't know. The the real ones will remember the uh, basic campfire for Warchief campaign from back in the day. <laughs> don't recall that one. No, but I don't. No, I don't. I literally only like I flew over the entire thing once. I literally only remember those two zones because I. Oh, I think I remember. Desolus was green. I think very green. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah in the it's center. getting greener. Yeah, full of happiness. Which is yeah, yeah. Weird. Like people would have said that they put flying in the game because it trivialized questing. But guys, you're gonna see when you play Cataclysm again. Nobody plays in, nobody quests in Cataclysm. You hit level 15, and you, if you're a tank or a healer, you get like like 80 in a, in a minute. It's, well, you it's and insane. I, you and I were talking about uh, about hamster uh, hamster will the other night in raid, and he put out a recent video just a couple of days ago. And it really soured me about Kata, and I hope it's just the private server he was playing on, but it makes me scared. He's literally walking with a brand new tune, white gear, half of his gear didn't even have a gear slot, and he's one-hitting every mob as he runs through, taking no damage, like literally just like it's not even that. a game. It's that way. That Not even sucks. Close. Oh, that sucks. It only becomes like hard when you hit like Bashir and like you, you do the actual cataclysm zones. But you're not gonna quest anyway. Nobody quests. You people do battlegrounds or, or, or dungeons all the time. I, I be, see my wife loves questing and she's I've turned into someone who loves questing, so I quest as much as I can. I like quests. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably quest. Uh, I, I guess well it depends. I like quests on PvP like servers. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll PvE server changes, changes things a bit. I play on uh, PvE server on current rat though. But the um, it depends on whether or not they're doing the world revamp in pre patch. Because if pre patch just only opens up the new class and race combinations and doesn't do the world revamp, then it's kind of pointless to quest because, like, the whole the way that I see it, questing in Kata, the whole point of it would be to see the new questing experience in the in the zones and stuff like that. And if that isn't in in pre patch, then like I bet yeah, money it is in a dungeon. I bet money it's in there in in uh, yeah because they're putting in goblins and wargans that has to like seamlessly move right in, and the wargan place is connected to yeah. So if they're if they're if they are doing that, which based on what you just said seems like they will, then yeah, I'll I'll probably quest. Uh, even though I am going to be leveling a class that can tank or heal or dps i'll probably quest anyway just because i want to see the new stuff because it's been a really long time since i went through all of the the kata stuff i never did i mean i worked two tunes up to 85 and all i ever did in the old world was just that one fly through the one time yeah yeah there was yeah. like i remember like back in the day in original kata like so many people didn't do the new questing experience until they started the like level alts later on because like you already had like by the end of Wrath, so many people had multiple 80s. Like I had like four or five characters at 80 at the end of original Wrath. And you can thank I, TOC for that. Yeah, pretty much. And I I went directly into the new zones for Kata and didn't do any of the uh the updated old world content until I started to level a fresh character, which was like a year into Kata. So like a lot of a lot of people didn't see the new stuff until later on because there weren't a ton of people picking up the game for the first time. There was a few, but it was not nearly as many as the people that were already level eighty when Kata first released. So a lot of people didn't see the new stuff. 
Yeah, I don't think that's I, what happened uh, in TBC. I really never have done a single like Kata revamp zone ever in my entire life. I've never like quested through one. Only the two starting zones for me. Yeah, same. There was as soon as they added in Chromie time to retail, like what a lot of people did, and what I most recently did when I started doing, like the most recently I played retail was season one of Shadowlands, and at that point I had a character that was like can't remember what expansion i left i think oh i had a character from bfa so i i was already starting like in a decent spot um but when i started i just decided to level a fresh character and i didn't level in the cata zones i went to tpc like i went chromie time and i did tpc yeah. or chromie time and did wrath or whatever or chromie time and did wad like i didn't do the cata ones at all so like it's been a really long time since i've done the cata revamp zones yep that is that's that's the one thing I am excited to is just to try out the quests. I hear a lot of more of them are voiced, which I I love I love voiced quests, which is weird that I haven't tried the add on that adds voice to Vanilla. But I was gonna do it for the Hardcore Lodge, but I just didn't do it. Well, a lot of the new quests in in the Cataclysm zones, the new zones, they are voiced. So you got that going on for you? Yeah, that yeah, that's what I heard from like. I forget. I think Willie, maybe. I think that's like one of the things that people kind of sleep on about Kata is that the the narrative team took a pretty big step up in uh, in Kata with trying to make everything sort of connected better. There's like a few interconnected quest lines that like span across multiple zones and multiple like level, uh, I don't know, bands, I guess. Like the Defias quest line from Ali for Alliance starts when you're about baby still and goes all the way through the anixia attunement like that's pretty rad like a quest line that goes all and they the way connect like when that. you kill van cliff with the whole thing so is he her his daughter that is upset yeah so and then i mean like my favorite one is garros like the tvc quest line that leads to it like it's like hidden in front of her eyes the whole time yeah so yeah so there's stuff like that like there are some overarching stories that were from like the old school style but this newer like the kata revamp stuff if you do the zones in order like though if you actually like nobody reads the quest text anymore but if you did you would see that the breadcrumb quest that leads you to the next zone there's a reason why the next zone is the next zone and it fits in with the story and it sort of continues to the point where like people from a quest hub in the next zone already kind of know who you are a little bit like they you're not like a complete random adventurer like how you are in vanilla you're just a rando that shows up and starts doing chores for them and stuff but in kata like you're like you know this up and comer in the alliance or in the horde and you're you know you're serving the horde or the alliance by going through and doing all this stuff so it's like it's just a di it's a different vibe to quest through kata than it was in vanilla and tbc and vanilla and tbc and even wrath to an extent you feel more like an old school like adventurer Whereas that's what in, i like about it though yeah and i do too but i, also I don't like, like being the hero Canada, how like you feel like you're a you're a representative of your faction specifically instead of just a random adventurer to and, the, like, so i like them both but for different reasons the reason that's lame i love that in single player games but it's lame to me in mmos because i'm like well he's the same hero i am she's the same hero i am this is freaking stupid like, yeah, there's a million <laughs> champions of Azeroth. Like yeah. A champion of Azeroth. This is like, Everybody okay. gets an Ashbringer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The artifact. Well, like, yeah. If I can spoil you like two lines when the Cataclysm starts, okay, this is the start of the Cataclysm zones. Uh, it's basically in the Horde. I don't recall the alliance when it was pretty similar, but it was like a goblin that was like. Uh, uh, paying people to go to like fight the alliance he was like what am i gonna do i promised them war heroes and i got these dorks in here uh, <laughs> and they're in the boat and then it sinks and you go to bashir that's basically the start of the the zone yeah, well but I, I do agree with you bob like it is like it does it almost like the the shift in the vibe between like random adventure versus like oh you're the champion like yeah it is kind of cheapened by the fact that you're surrounded by other champions like yeah, it's, it's cool in single player games. Really feels, cool. Yeah, definitely. And it, it definitely feels like the vanilla vibe of like you're just a cog in the machine as opposed to, you know, the later on feeling of like you are the operator of the machine, like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like that 
difference is kind of weird. You see it in games like Final Fantasy 14, where like it's essentially a single player game that you like team up with other players every once in a while, but like you are the main character as you're playing through the story. But yeah, once you get into those that group content, you're surrounded by other main characters. And it's like, well, we can't all be the main character. Yeah. I, I prefer that nobody's the main character. Like the world, like they they keep saying this, the world is the main character. Like I prefer that. I love sure. it. Yeah. But like there are things that I can't appreciate about the 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 solo the solo single player questing experience in the cata in the cata feels more like a single player RPG, which is cool in its own way. I mean, I'll even give you um dragonflight uh, they gave it to me free so i tried it out and that was fun if i just thought of it as a single player game because it really was like i remember the first time i i like realized this is completely single player i'm in a group with mel and i'm waiting for her to start a escort quest i'm like mel what is taking so long and she's like i'm halfway through the quest i was like he's standing right here She's Actually, like they give her a different phase or something for the quest. She's like, no, he's with he's with me. No, it's just like literally, you you do all of that shit and like you can just do it separate of each other. Like there's no even if you check the little box to say sync quests. Like I just started it and then I had another one of him and she had one of him. Like and it was yeah, just like you get like a player assigned NPC. I just oh, I, sort I, of like it, the dude you have to follow in cameras of time. It yeah yeah. Yeah, they started doing that in in Kata with um, the Wow Crendor had like a whole. Was it Wow Crendor? Yeah, was it he made like the the that Darnell guy, guy from the, the undead starting zone. He would like take Darnell all over the place. Dumas. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, and well, even in TBC, that quest like you had to wait for him to make the round with the other person, right? Like this is just like you all mm-hmm. like he's there and you just get him and then it's just a copy of him that walks off for each person that gets the quest and nobody has to wait for any you know escort and like i know it makes it simpler but kind of cheapens it really did for me i was like oh okay well so really we're just racing single player because like we don't like link up for anything it's completely Mm -hmm. separate and on top I have of that, long you're just accepted the... that dude. Yeah, sorry, go on. Delay. Oh, that's I'm all South I was going to say. You're just cloning the NPC, and it's weird. Yeah, it just it it takes you out of the gameplay experience for Has me. Has science gone too far? <laughs> all right. Well, the next part is we talked about it last week. They were bringing out the 100 percent buff all the way through level 40, and now we've gotten to try it for me. Oh, I freaking loved it. What did you guys think? I haven't started the level of character with it yet. Like I got the shaman to 40, like just before it went in. But the next thing that I level, I will get to experience it. I did log onto a character just to see whether the gold increase was tied to the XP buff. And it is, it's this, the buff that gives you the hundred percent XP also gives you 300% gold from quests. So it's one of those things where like, I was starting to think, that maybe if you didn't want to level out of a zone, if you wanted to finish all of the quests in the zone for the extra gold, you could turn off the XP gain, but maybe still keep the extra gold. Like, I didn't know if they tied it to the buff or if they had just gone in and, like, just did an X3 on all of the quest gold, but now it's tied to the buff, which makes sense. I see what you're saying. Do it. If you could turn off the XP buff and just do all and the quests still farm gold have by the leveling. 300%, I see, okay. But no, nah, it doesn't work that way. It's it's tied to the it's tied to the XP buff. So for anybody who had a similar idea, <laughs> it's it's not going to work that way. Damn, damn, yeah. Okay, well, I uh, I mean, I only worked from like thirty six to f- to forty, but that felt freaking awesome. And I quested. Oh yeah, it turned in those quests and see that big old number. Oh, man, it felt so good. But Kipso's still working up tunes, and San has also working up a new tune. Like, how do you guys feel about it? Either one of you first. Well, basically, it's like three dungeon runs. So I'm playing Shaman, so it's already easy mode. I just pull half the freaking dungeon, and we got like three matches AOE down, and I do it over and over again. And like, I get a level every 40 minutes, every hour, something like that. It's insane. Like, if you get like three matches that know what they are doing, and when you're doing it with randoms, you kind of like waste a half an hour of your time kicking people and finding people that don't die because they go into melee range and 
what not. But once you get the momentum going, you get like a level of 40 every 40 minutes. It's freaking insane. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's um it's really weird. Like season of mastery was like, okay, guys, we're not gonna put you through the grueling vanilla leveling experience again. Don't worry. You don't have to suffer through that. You get like double quest XP or whatever that buff was. Do you guys remember that? Um and then they just didn't have anything like that for Sod. And they were like, yeah, and we're giving you runes, but the monsters will be, like, harder to kill. And well, I was like, hold on, hold okay, on. this is going to be... Hold on. Okay, you go. Well, yeah, no, let me just intervene there, because we talked to them at Blizz, at, at, uh, at, at BlizzCon, and they specifically said they didn't make the mobs harder to kill. They didn't want to add more armor and life to the mobs and make it, like, tedious. They only added more damage to the mobs so the mobs okay. did more damage to you so that was i don't know if it's changed since then if i missed it or something but that was their initial like plan was to make the world more dangerous damage wise rather than making it longer and tedious to kill mobs but sorry go ahead yeah i think i think that is true um which is yeah but um yeah i mean i don't know i was i leveled all the the stuff in in phase one and i was like this is gonna be like this is like more than a full-time job this is intense this is going to be a workout like you really need to buckle up and breathe people by the you know one or two phases in you're going to have like two characters absolute max because this is vanilla leveling they want us in this right and then like yeah there's going to be like um what do you call it like meta mix-ups like they said they're going to like nerf warrior like make other classes good and, and other classes bad and so i assumed that every class would remain playable to some extent and that you would stick to those characters. And then they just like completely 180 it and then doubled all the, the XP. And now we just reroll alts and they want us to flavor the month it up. So it's like, it's like a massive philosophy change and I don't get why they did it two or three weeks into phase two. It's, it's just like, I, I don't, I think like, I feel like anybody who like knows what vanilla leveling is, you, you saw this coming, like, 25 to 40 is a big deal like it takes a while and then they were like oh crap this actually takes a while we'll make it really easy now it's like well why didn't you what just do with that to begin with i don't know or like do it for like the first character is like hard and then the alts are easy or something if you want us to have alts i don't know it's I like like really weird i like that like, but... I, I, I agree with the buff existing, but I don't, I just don't get like throwing it in on the third week is just like what? Like, it was I don't know. It's it seems soon. I'm kind of like so. I first my first my first reaction to say, and I'm and I love that I get to talk about this on stream and people like p pipe in and like you know cross examine what I'm saying because it it really makes me think about oh I didn't think about that because I'm on stream and I'm talking and I'm like dude just make it so your first tune. Work them up, and then every tune has the the buff, or then even increase it after that tune gets up, and like that'd be great. And then some of the chat is, of course, like, well, how does that go for the guy that you know lost his job, had to look for a job for three weeks, now has a job, feels more comfortable, wants to start playing again, but he doesn't have that worked up tune. He does he like how's that for a catch up mechanic at that point? It's bad. And I was like. Oh, that is a really good point. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think like what what keeps me saying like the flavor of the month thing. They are really going for it, and uh, like they realize they kill like five specs, and instead of going, we should kind of fix these things. They thought it was easier to just give us more XP so we could reroll. And I kind of get it because I was that guy. I was the bear, and they made the bear like god awful. Then they buffed the like ten percent attack power. Wow, I love my swipe. So like I had to actually reroll twice. So like if I didn't have the XP buff, there is a non-zero chance I would have quit. Yeah, I, I think they're just in a tough spot. I think like I've I've heard from a lot of people that they when they found out that Nomer was the raid, they were not enthusiastic about it at all because hey, they Nomer too, yeah, Nomer the dungeon. So they didn't think that Nomer the raid would be any better. They did a and good job though, like, didn't they? They did, I yeah. But like, I think it's better. Suck. Yeah, because I hated I, Nomer. But I liked Nomer. I liked original Nomer, even though I, you know, farmed it for however many times for MCPs and stuff like that. But like, 
I the actual dungeon is cool. Like lore wise, I think it's interesting. You know the, the where where the gnomes came from, and then you know the irradiation, like all that stuff. I think from a story perspective, I think Gnomer is cool, and it's like big, and it's just hilarious that the ceilings are that tall, but it's gnomes, like that sort of thing. It's just it's a very whimsical dungeon. So I always liked Gnomer, so I was on board with it being the raid. But a lot of there was a lot of people that didn't feel that way. There's a lot of people that were not excited for Gnomer at all, and then going from twenty five to forty. And seeing how long it took, I think that was like a lot of people were like, never mind, I'm gonna sit this phase out. So at least by adding in the XP, but maybe, maybe that's why the timing is what it was, where they decided to pull the hundred percent buff forward into phase two instead of at the start of phase three, because they saw maybe a bit of drop off of people not even wanting to level to 40 because it took so long and they weren't excited about Nomer. So maybe this was like a way for them to try and get people to like not quit. I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't think it's a maybe. I think that's that's just a hundred percent how it is. Like I think they even said that in the no notes, doubt. But it's like they're just like a gut reaction thing. Like I don't know. They should have just had it in from the start. I don't know. Like why? I agree why with make us level too. really slow? Because season of discovery, like phase one, um, it's kind of boring. Everybody had a million alts. I, I had every single class. Um, it was fun checking out what everybody got. If that's the vibe that they were going for, why not the XP buff from the start, you know? But they just like held off on it and then were like, oh man, everybody's quitting and then released it. See, they and... probably just didn't foresee that that would be an issue for phase two. And then they were like, oh no. <laughs> well, and, yeah. And that's, that's probably what it was. I mean, like, they, I mean, for all the faults in the game right now, like, I think overall considering the scope of what they're doing i think the devs generally are doing a pretty good job um there's some stuff that definitely needs a little bit of love but like overall i think they're doing fine it's a bit of a good time a, yeah. a, a situation for blizzard where, like, standards i am surprised they did this good like they are actually listening to feedback most of the time like if you compare bfd and all the troubles we have bfd to this like they kind of addressed a lot of stuff they also made the raid harder yeah i wanted so, that like, it's it's definitely cool it's the stuff that they've been doing is pretty cool um it's just a situation where it's like they just simply cannot see the future that's all it really was like they didn't they didn't think that it was going to be an issue leveling from 25 to 40 in until it was and they were like okay well we know how we can mitigate some of this and then they pulled the xp buff forward so like Sure, it definitely would have made more sense for it to be from the start, but they probably didn't think that it was going to be an issue at the start of the phase, and then it ended up being one, so they fixed it. But yeah, it's I mean, it's easy to look at it with hindsight and be like, oh, they should have done it from the start. Well, and I agree that they probably should have done it from the start. This and is arguably maybe they should have foreseen that it would be an issue, but I don't know. That's all we can really do is look at it with hindsight and speculate. <laughs> this it's is also a for your back it. thing. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm saying it's also a bank for your back thing. If you look at like how they deal with new tiers in retail, they do the exact same thing. Like they make the, the start hard so people get like the most playtime on it. And when they kind of sense that people are getting bored, they nerf the rate to the ground. So yeah. like the people that, yeah, that, that's kind of their strategy. It works. Well, what I what I want, so I agree with Kipso. I kind of just wish it was in from the start. I mean, I don't like... People are like, you got to work for it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's a seasonal server. I really don't care. We've done this. Like Josh Josh Corbett on Countdown says it a, a million times. We've done this a million times. Like mm -hmm. the the like the like the thing back in original, you know, vanilla through Wrath, everybody was like, I don't like the boost because people don't learn how to play their character. I don't like this because they don't know how to play. We're a different crowd now. We we all can learn very fast. There's there's tons of guides on how to play different characters. Like it's a different world. I agree that it was horrible before to push people through the leveling process because they needed to learn. But now there's so many other ways to do that. What I'm scared of is if they don't tell us it's gonna come in at the start, people are going to assume now that it's gonna come in week three or four in phase three mm -hmm. and just wait for that. Or they'll do a few levels, see how it is, and then they'll get to like level 43 and then just be like, oh, I'll just wait for the, the catch up thing. But I think it's just to compare it to Season of Mastery, I think it's weird. But I mean, that's probably a whole different dev team, basically a different company at this point. But um, the seasonal servers are supposed to be like 
you know, f faster and more fun. So, like, I don't know. I don't get why they didn't do it in phase one, to be honest. Like, a little 20% XP buff. Same. Um, Because, like, that's the whole point. The point is, like, everybody gets cool new flavor stuff, and you're supposed to do run around and try all the flavors, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, they could have even, they could have, like, so we all, like, lots of us, to get our first tune up, skipped runes, right? Why didn't oh, yeah, they dude, just... none of my characters have all the runes. Yeah. Literally none of them. Why didn't they just put the XP into there? Why did, like, why isn't it just for your runes, it's a fourth of eight level for each rune? True. Because you have to go out of your way to get them. Yeah, and lots of them are harder to get at certain levels. And if you do get a bunch of people to help you, Good on you. You're playing an MMO. The more people that you can get to help you, the better you get to be. And I know it does suck because big streamers get everybody to help them, but that's just the way it's always going to be in a like a MMO environment. The big guys and gals are always going to get it before you, and that's just the way it is, man. But it's cool. Like I don't, I don't know. I think they could have just baked in extra EXP to the runes, easy as pie, and then I would be going to get runes that I'm never going to use. Yeah, same. Like I, uh, my hunter did Wailing Caverns, and I got the, the thing for the Beast Mastery rune. And I didn't even know what it was, and I was like, "What is this thing?" And they had already nerfed the Scorpion snapshotting with um, Kill Command, and so it was like, "Okay, you bring this to the dude in Stone Talon, and then you train the Wyvern, right?" That everybody did like in the first few days, and I was like, "Oh, this is already nerfed." Um, even though I had done the hard part of the rune, I did, um, I did Wailing Caverns. I, it, I just didn't, I was like, I see if they buff it again, I'll go get it. But why would I, I just don't care. <laughs> so I just didn't do it. And I still don't have kill command on my hunter. I don't need it for anything. So, but that's like part of the game. That's that, that was supposed to be the good part, you know, like with season of discovery, that that's the part that they added in. Yeah. And just, I mean, yeah, you're just not going to go get the other ones. So let everybody play your content by just putting a, you know, a carrot at the end of that stick. And I don't know if they should put gold to it also, but yeah, I know it I was. I bots will get runes for well, the hard ones. If you think about it, they did. They, what made me think about it is they did it with one of the runes really well. And that was the rune that everybody had to get with the dark, the dark riders. Yeah, that, that was thing like was 15k. Like it was 15k exp i believe and mm -hmm. or or like a little over 15 gold if you were max max level and that felt good like even if you didn't need the rune you know it's just like why not do that too you know for the rest of them and i'm sure the rest of them gave a little bit i didn't pay attention they probably gave just a normal small quest worth of of exp but i want 5 six quests worth it's like really confusing which ones do and which ones don't like there's the um, in Desolus, there's that campfire that starts that one quest. Yeah. Um, that is for several different runes for different classes and stuff. It's the it's the start of the eclipse rune for druids. And you have to be level 30 to pick up the quest. But the quest itself doesn't give you any XP at all. It's literally just a breadcrumb that leads you to the rest of all the stuff you have to do to get the rune. So it's like, yeah, I don't I don't I don't get why they don't have xp associated with that stuff like i guess the reward for doing that is the rune but like you know what if you're never what if you're a druid and you're literally never going to have eclipse equipped ever you know yeah, what like if you're, you're only feral, feral yeah then you just don't go get it like yeah there's the only reason to get at that point is completionism like which i did but then it's a good thing i did because i'm not feral right now <laughs> But like mm -hmm. in that sense, I kind of enjoy that we share the same quest with other classes because like I got a lot of runes just helping friends get the runes, you know, like the Dark Rider quest for precise timing. I didn't even use it. I like I, I had to help my friend to get it. I like some of them being shared. I thought th well, I, I the think Dark they were a little lazy, like, though, right? Like you don't actually around. have to have that trinket for the Dark Rider stuff. As long as you are in a group with the people that get the tag and the kill, you can still pick up the item. Like you don't need the trinket that summons them, and you don't need to have the quest in your log to get the item. You can still pick it up even if you don't have mm -hmm. any of that stuff done yet, which is kind of cool. That was a smart thing. You could also pick it up if you have it done. Don't do what I did and just like help a few people with it. And I didn't even realize that it, it was taking up five bag slots in my bag. 
until I <laughs> oh, helped yeah, the next person. Yeah, when I helped the next person, it was like, you can't pick this up. I was like, I thought you could. Oh, I've still got them in my bag and I don't need them. Crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the Dark Riders were great because you can you can solo them as a solo player challenge or you can get a group and everybody needs them. So it's like if you just wait around, you, you either go there and kill it by yourself or you just wait around and somebody will help you kill it. Whereas like my shaman doesn't have Molten Blast. I literally have to like pay somebody to go hit the frozen Makura or whatever at this point. It's deleted content. I, I think that's really bad design. Oh, just go to... um. Just go to um, Mulgor, do the Shaman one, or do the uh, Torn version. That's the one where yeah. you, you go to the dig site, and you get the key, and you open the, the chest under the table, and it has the rune in there. Oh, is it you know, the, the Life Bloom one makes you want to die. <laughs> I had to get at a level 25, because I was respecting... Oh, like, the one where you gotta, like... It takes you, like, 20 minutes. You gotta, like, channel at the dude or whatever. Yeah, and you got to get another guy. And, like, what's going to happen yeah. when everybody's, like, level cap? And, like, if we're level 60. Like, where am I, how am I going to find somebody else that needs that quest? Because I tried getting a friend to do it, and it didn't work. You needed somebody that needed the quest to actually be able to proc it with two people. You know, holy shit. I totally forgot to do voice fails. There was a question. I was like, wasn't that a voicemail question? That was totally... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that's well, we just answered it, I guess. There you go. Yeah, here. Uh, I think it's... Yeah, Kim, so you can just, just here, go do the torn. I'll play version. it. You don't yeah. have to do the frozen Malkaret at all. Here, I'll That's play it. Sure. I, thought it was, I thought it was frozen for every... Because there's like the frozen undead thing and the frozen Duratar thing. There's like a frozen guy in every starting zone, right? Not in Mulgore. That's, I literally did it on my Shaman because I couldn't find anybody to help me do the Makara in Duratar, so I just went to Mulgore and did the torn version. <laughs> yeah, if there's a failsafe, then I... I think it's fine, but for that kind of stuff, like uh, like the priest and uh, druid, like the healing thing or whatever that you get from it, like I think priests get prayer mending or something. It's like that is way too important to like having to like pay a level one druid one gold to run out in Darnassus. Like that's what I did on my priest because I leveled them pretty late in phase one. But those kind of runes are just like, why would you put this in the game? Just requiring people to do something for with two people in the starter zone is just like awful well here let me i'll go ahead and play this real uh, real quick greetings pop my the guest i'm mostly known as burr sod hasn't really got my belly by now i leveled one tune to forry but it doesn't really feel right so what do you guys think about the idea that's kind of similar to scotty's that you can buy your runes from previous phase for your twink at the Valent vendor or another reputation vendor, so you don't have to do the sometimes tedious quest chains or roll through four or five times if you just want to try out a new class or a spec. So, this is an idea Scotty J had, where you can like you could still do the runes the old-fashioned way. You got friends to do it. You could do it at whatever level you want, but then you level cap being able to buy the runes for a cheap price from the Duratar Supply Company, or the Alliance version of it, the new rep that they put out. And you make everything, once you get friendly, you can buy everything. It's just level-gated. Uh, so if you want to be cool and get it early, you go and have friends help you do it. But if not, you're going to get them all for fairly cheap by the time you you work up. I think it's a pretty good idea. The only roadblock that I could see could be solved relatively easily. They've already proved that they can put bind on account stuff in the game. So, like, if you're on a druid, for example, as your max level character and you're leveling a warrior, like, you won't... I, I think on the supply vendor, you can see the warrior runes, but I don't know if it'll let you buy them right now. But why not have, like, a... A voucher, like a rune voucher, a bind an account rune voucher that's only available to be purchased by level 40 that you can then send to your characters. And then on that character, you get the voucher out of the mail, go to the supply vendor, and then you can turn it in for whatever rune. I had this, uh, that was, mine wasn't the vouchers better because then you don't have to deal with looking for all the different runes. You just send vouchers. But I had that same idea uh, when... Like Scotty said it, I was like, or you could just have it to where you send it as a buy not account at item. But I still think the level gate 
would be important for that. I don't know if a level one with all the runes is really what we're looking for, but maybe it is. Maybe it is. It's fucking fun time. It'd be kind of fun. And it'd be fun to see people create level one twinks. Too, think, you um, know what I mean? Like, that would be kind of cool, actually. There's always some kind of new currency with whatever system that they do, like the STV coins. Make it so you can buy the old runes with some ridiculous amount of coins, like 10 silver coins for the kill command rune or something. So that way you don't have to do Wailing Caverns. You can just do the th the current content thing. And then next phase, just add some kind of currency that you can trade down. And then you can just always buy the runes. Um, I feel like they do that kind of stuff in retail. I don't know. That's what I would do if I was designing it. But I don't know. I'm not a game developer or anything. I don't know if that's a good idea. But I feel like that kind of makes sense. Because then yeah. people are doing the or you content. Just, yeah, you could do it either way. You Like, you could do it, the, like, multiple ways to get it. Like, you could do the... If, if you love the STV event, you could do it there. Or if you love to, like, grind and... And you know, make gold. You could buy it with gold from the uh, from the vendors. You know, like making multiple ways to get it done. That's I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah, or some kind of nomer thing, like some kind of nomergon currency. That's just like a general, like I guess those little the crafting things. But I mean, those things are worthless now. But yeah, make it so you like can that, turn in ten of those for a voucher, right? And yeah. Instead of like now selling them for forty silver or whatever they are on your server, that's what they are on ours. They were five gold and loads, bro. Hmm. I think maybe they'll add something. Like I that sold at my level first 60. for fifteen a piece, four of them. Ooh, big. You money. screwed them good, baby. Mm -hmm. First lockout, <laughs> Sorry, fifteen no gold a piece, four of them. <laughs> they dropped fast though, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I I think there's lots of ways to uh to to uh bring up the uh the uh the ways to catch up that yeah, could be fun to do at the same time. Ways to like do stuff to make it easier to get ruins on alts. I think like the overall like idea of making it easier for your alts is a good idea. The specific way they do it I it's kind of like a who cares as long as they do it for me anyway like you know there's plenty like Scotty's idea is a good idea the voucher idea like whatever like all this other stuff the coins the STV coins like all this stuff are all potentially good ideas but I think the root of it is that it would be nice if there was a way to not have to re any solution would do yeah it's the 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 base issue is one that has existed in WoW for a really long time which is once you've done a tedious grind on your main you don't feel like doing it again on your alts so if there's a way around that that would be super cool <laughs> definitely definitely okay well um i don't really want to like i don't want to go over all the different hot fixes and tuning changes but they'll be in the notes but we don't have the type of time to really dive into those if I there's them at stv it's boring yeah, and it, they're changing constantly. If there's anyone that you want to like, like you you guys would like to specifically say something about, feel free to like let me know. But I, I don't one, really. The only ones that really like actually matter uh, are the hunter ones, where like the stuff that was just giving attack power now also gives range attack power. Like the new stuff, the new profession stuff was previously only giving melee attack power, but now it also gives range attack power. That is cool. They're they're trying to figure out how to fix the. Ranged Hunter. You but. know the previous buff? Because I did the math. Because I, I had to make it for a video. Do you know the previous buff they gave to the Ranged Hunter? How much overall damage it was? Give me a guess in a percentage. How much percentage it was for you? <laughs> Couldn't have been that I much. no idea. 3.1%. That's it? Ugh. Yeah, That's the it. Shot they are the second worst pick in the game, and they gave them 3.1% more damage. Is that 3.1% more damage in Beastmaster? Spec or in marksman spec? I'm very curious how marksman changes. I took your the range. best log of the guy, which was a marksman, so okay. it might have been even less for beast mastery because they didn't affect them with the cobra thing. Okay. Did you guys see that Reddit post that uh, was about how spell power is more beneficial for ranged hunter now? I did see that people are like building spell power sets for hunters now for to take advantage of the, all the yep. magical damage they do. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's kind of 
not to burst anybody's bubble, but I think Steady Shot is supposed to suck right now, and it's just going to get incredibly buffed at some point. So just wait until then, and then play your Rage Hunter. They're going to make it like 500% weapon damage or something. And I'm really hyped for it, because it's the the Steady Shot from TBC. Um, and I really, really like that rotation. I like main to Hunter in TBC. And... I watched yeah, your Hunter video today, too. It was a good one. Oh, the leveling one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have an icon too. The ability has a cool icon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That steady shot. Yeah, I think it's but yeah. I think interesting. It's, it's just not supposed to be playable right now. You're supposed to play melee. Melee is the new hype flavor of the month thing. So just play that now, and then range will be really good at some other point, and then play that then. That's just what the devs want. So, well, at the same time though, I think they have to be really careful because I'm not doing it yet, but I'm learning from people like Maui and different people, hunters are freaking awesome in PvP because you got both. You really, oh yeah, you just keep picking at people from range. There's no downside. And then they come in and you're like, bitch, you just made the wrong choice. You know, like, mm-hmm. and it's so good right now. Like it's, and like with the runes changing your melee so much, there's going to be ways to have really good, like melee burst in marks, like, like spec so they've got to be really careful i think or hunters could just become gods especially with all their utility the traps the trap launch i mean there's just so much that could so they so i i I understand why they're trying to be careful i feel like you see it all the time like they start getting hit by the pet and you see them physically give up and just die like (laughs) i mean i do it yeah like i can't you got nothing to do your your hibernate resists you got nothing you can do yeah, it's like you're only out. I think like I, I envisioned the final form of all the hunter stuff being like turbo melee weaving. Like instead of being that fully be melee sick. or fully range, like a combination of the two where when you go to melee weave, your melee weaves are on crack. And I then love melee back weaving. Range, your range rotation is still very strong. So I, I feel like that's the type of stuff that they should be doing. Like melee weaving was emergent player behavior. It wasn't like it, it. You could look at the toolkit of a hunter and be like, "Oh, they were probably supposed to melee weave the whole time with having a separate swing timer for your melee and your ranged attacks." Like it makes sense, and like Raptor Strike being on next swing, like it makes sense for for it to have been designed that way. But it probably wasn't. It was probably an accident, and it was just emergent player behavior that created melee weaving. And they should be embracing that. And this is speaking as a feral druid who had last right weaving crushed in wrath. Like emergent player behavior is fun. It's fun to find new ways to play the game, and it would be nice if Blizzard would foster that instead of try and kill it. I don't know if bear weaving weaving was fun. Oh yeah, (laughs) but melee weaving is fun. I always be on the druid to be that way. (laughs) Yeah, because it made me not feel like that. That's the reason why I like last right. We're gonna tangent, but like that's the reason why I like last right weaving because I didn't feel like a cat druid. I felt like a you had a shapeshifter. Yeah. I wasn't just using cast stuff, I was using bear stuff too. It was fun to use both for me. There was a lot of people that didn't like it, but I'm one of the, the people that really did like it. It added an extra layer of complexity that I really enjoyed, especially once you get good at it. It flows pretty nicely, surprisingly nicely, once you actually know what you're doing. I'll give you that. Okay, I'll give you... It's the same way with melee it's... weaving, though. Well, no, hold melee, on. I'll... You have to learn how to do it first. You suck at it at first, and you get good at it, and then it's fun because it flows. Well, let me give you... I think you actually might be right because it's my personal experience with it. And during the time that bear that bear weaving was popular, I was a struggling warrior tank in wrath and everybody was shitting on me like and the bears were the biggest or the the feral DPS druids were the biggest bitch for me because of the the weaving. So maybe I'm a little bit biased because of that. It's a good point to point out. it was definitely an issue. With and I never sure. tried it, too. I made my feral after, so. Yeah, it's one of those things where it was like the, the amount of damage that you were doing did not match up with the amount of threat you were generating, which was. Well, bad. bear was so stupid in rat anyway that like just any bear related thing is going to pull threat. Yeah. yeah. But Why can't funny? it be that way now? It's just, yeah, it's just funny that like the only time you did good threat as a feral druid is when you were DPSing. <laughs> I think, I mean, I don't know. I think. Another thing, yeah. I mean, we could go on for so many different things, but like, yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to tangent, didn't, but that's well, the easiest parallel I can draw between melee weaving was is last rate weaving, where emergent player behavior is fun once you get the hang of it. You have to learn how to do it, but it's 
it would be unfortunate if Blizzard decided to kill melee weaving because of the emergent player behavior because they have a track record of squishing emergent player behavior which is not fun but i'm really hoping that they don't do that for melee weaving well and it it kind of goes back to our ex exp buff like an exp buff you know it helps the the little guy too but it really helps the bigger guys too like the big the big the big braids like kipso with faster leveling he's gonna have more time to fuck around and to to like find out different shit same with sand same with you like you guys are gonna have more time to figure out different shit on different on different classes people like me smooth brains we get to try more like classes and for me like i found out like i thought for sure rogue and druid were gonna be my two two classes period that I'm going to take all the way to the end. That was quickly changed after I fucking played Hunter for the first time. And like, I was just like, Oh my God, I've loved this fucking class. Like, and other people could have a chance to do that, but they're not going to do that unless it's fast. Like, so even people like me with a lot of time, I'm not going to like try something brand new unless it's quick, but given the opportunity to actually try it, Oh wow, a whole new world comes in. Oh my gosh, Simon, how you doing, brother? Thank you for the Did raid, Simon Eyes. Woo! My goodness. Sorry. Creator, content creator bias again here, but like the leveling boost to make guides and stuff. That that is a content factory right there, you know? Like they kind of nailed the content creation aspect also. They made it a lot easier. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. That 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 just brought it all back to me. I was like, dude, even better to like just let us level faster. And if the the vanilla enthusiasts or people that want to gatekeep stuff, like guys, it's seasonal. Come on, stop this. We don't. We don't. My vanilla to. friction. <laughs> I mean, yeah, arrow's going strong. Fine. It doesn't seem like Sod has really eroded much it of people's interest in in era. Not that I've seen anyway. So it's not like it's not like they're competing versions of the game or anything like that. It's just another option that's available. Yep. We have a we are blessed right now as classic. Just think about take yourself back to 2017. Could you ever imagine we had this many options? Ever. Oh dude, no, not a million. Classic years. era, hardcore, sod, wrath. Yeah, I still at the can't moment. believe that classic even happened. Like I, know, I remember for real. being in t- in like a discord with all my private server guildies like just like in awe that they actually did it because they said that they wouldn't for so many years and they were so stubborn yeah it's just like keep in mind this is we the, are so the lucky the whole version of it like they didn't even try that much and we got all this stuff oh yeah can you imagine like what they could do yeah they dumped a bunch of resources into it yeah well, I'm hoping, you know, Microsoft, I'm hoping Microsoft kind of like goes back and lets, you know, has a more hands off approach and just supports Blizzard and lets them find their 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 way. Yeah, I mean, the success of Classic is undeniable, so you would think that they would be more willing to. Why are we paying with our sub for Classic for Eon has it cost us to do retail? We're basically paying for it. I know, we're basically we are. paying for his own kingdom. <laughs> that is true. I think it's like literal welfare. This is kind of Ian has been like, I gotta thank him. Like he's the only reason I beat bosses back in the day when he was part of E E Elitist Jerks. He made did a lot for me, but it might be time to pass on the torch. Sorry. It seemed like I mean Ian I mean, always was. Ian like, should have just was, always been in charge of the raids. That's it. Yeah, when like, he was, he's, when he was he made fantastic one fantastic of the raids. That's it. Yeah, he was fantastic. promoted out of usefulness. He doesn't know how to design systems. Every system he implemented uh, destroyed the game. Like dude, Acerite. His, his raid encounter design, whew, some of the best raids. Yeah, I mean, he was, that were heard, that yeah, were and him. that's never changed. Everybody always says the raids have been great. Like, I mean, yeah, they've they've had ones that aren't as good, but still. He makes great encounters, but everything else in the game died, which a lot of us love, you know? So, I don't know. What about, uh, so the last piece of news is removing class restrictions from Arathi Basin rewards. 
I feel like this is awesome. Um, to explain to anybody what I'm talking about, every class had certain rewards that they could get, a certain type of shoulders, a certain type of, uh, what is it, boots, like a certain type of everything, and it was like stuck to their class. So some of the different specs in different classes got n basically nothing, right? So now all of the gear that was all that was allowed for every class you could buy now. And that means like warriors could buy the leather stuff or the male stuff if they want to. I, like I haven't looked at all the items, so I don't know what this really opens for everybody. But I know for sure it'll open up stuff for like, say, Shadow Priest, say, Balance Druid, like... So this is kind of this is kind of cool. I, yeah. I don't know why did they do it to Warsaw Gulch stuff. The biggest thing about it is that it's they put it to Era also. It's not just for Sod; it's also for Era. So like, oh, oh I didn't hear that. I didn't read that for, in there. Yeah, it's for both versions. So like they That's cool. they they pretty much said that they the decision to have stuff be class restricted was kind of arbitrary. It's like if you have the rep why can't you just buy whatever you want sort of situation and yeah you're right like specs like balance druid where like the this the leather the druid leather on the uh arathi basin vendor it's kind of meh for casting like i taking a look at the differences between the druid set and like the mage priest lock stuff i would rather have the cloth as a caster uh, a caster druid for sure i would rather have the cloth than the leather so, and it's an easy win for them. They just opened up. They literally just made new gear for so many classes by doing nothing but taking restrictions off. I mean, I thought that was huge. I thought it was yeah, it's gonna shake a up smart the thing list to do stuff as well. I didn't even think to do it. Do like a huge amount. Like it's still like uh, the bis lists are still pre mostly gonna stay the same, um, but there are a couple of like things for pre bis and for like you know stopgap pieces and stuff that. <laughs> have their options expanded now let me ask you a question does okay so i believe on the arathi basin rogue um set the boots give you movement speed the same one that uh minor speed uh minor move and speed gives you is the druid the same or is the druid one the druid yeah, the one druid, just the rogue boots were already rogue druid okay okay i was just curious yeah, the main thing is like so like the male was already hunter shaman, but now like the like the belt for example is uh stam crit attack power and that might be decent for a warrior. So now a warrior will actually be able to take that, like that sort of thing. The cloth stuff like the uh the shoulders um have like spell damage, MP5 and a lot of int and some bonus armor. Um that's the mage priest lock ones, like that would be, you know, the shoulders that'd be great on a balanced druid because the druid shoulders are not that good for i don't even know if there is there even a caster version of the druid shoulders i don't even know i was but curious the, what they i was curious what was actually there for druid in vanilla because like druid gear in vanilla was just messed up for the longest time like their tier one set is a literal joke yeah it's still kind of messed up to be honest you get the, no the gear from molten thing. core to ak40 if you're a bear you get no gear no upgrade yeah mm -hmm. you're using blues basically yeah it's so weird i mean for warrior in original vanilla i mean even when you're in bwl lots i mean in for sure in, in molten core half of your gear is not molten core gear like at all like it's uh you're getting your gear from a lot of other places where yeah. I think Saad could use more of that. If I'm being honest, like we could use more reasons to go to Oldman to go to like during this time, like we really could because there's no point to go to those after leveling. I mean, for there's some little points, there's some little pieces you can get for different classes, but I mean, say rogue for rogue shoulders. Shoulders in the two different dungeons. One's good for PvP. One's good for uh, the one in um, RFD is good for PvP. The one in RF uh, in Oldman is good for PVE. But that's literally the only like really thing you're getting from dungeons as a rogue if you had full BFD gear. So there like could have been a lot of things off of like Tutankash. 
they're decent. Like if you get the of the tiger ones, but that's like it's a crapshoot because it's all of the tiger. Yeah, it, that's a that's a greed, you know. So that's a, it, it is a blue, but it's a random rolled stat. So like you got to get the gloves to drop in the first place, and then it has to roll tiger, and then it has to be a high roll <laughs> for it to be actually this. Well, and then currently right now, um, um, Simon Eyes who just rated us you know found out that a green offhand dagger is abyss dagger you know because we're doing mostly poison damage and shit mm -hmm. uh yeah it's 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 weird but i i just wish there was more stuff like just from bosses blues well, then the and main stuff. hand is, is a gut ripper it's a double yeah. doe so <laughs> yeah and if you know luck, basically <laughs> Most of the people you see that you're gonna be like, oh, you swiped, cool. Yeah, and even if you much. didn't swipe, everybody's just gonna think you swiped. Right, exactly. It's kind of sad. Like back in original vanilla, like whenever I was a kid playing the game, you saw somebody in some really cool gear, and you were like, oh my god, that guy's so cool. Like that, I I really hope I can get like half the gear that that guy had. You were like in awe, Tips and then up. now like I see somebody in good gear, and I'm like. Wow, that guy probably makes a lot of money. Like, I bet he has five <laughs> accounts and he just swipes on all of them. Give so. Well, to be fair, Leo, did you know that back in the day, if you saw somebody in full MC gear, he was probably like an unemployed 35 year old. Like, no. we were kids and we were like, oh. No, you, okay, I, that was the last time I was that, I was that cool guy you were <laughs> inspecting. I was that rogue that had purred like early on that had like everything epic. Like I was that guy. What it took, I was, what twenty, in my mid twenties after college in my first uh, network and or uh, systems engineering job. I guess I was more of a systems administrator at that point, but I did some engineering. But I would work forty, fifty hours a week, and I would uh, I would prog raids uh, forty, fifty hours a week. So I'd get home five. We'd log in. We start our uh, prog. We do it till about midnight. During the time, this this was back in the day when people didn't speed through everything. We had to talk about each poll. Not always, but lots of times. Like if something changed, we'd talk about it. And be like, "Well, here, let's dig in the logs." You know, you had your your like smart guys. You see the the Leroy Jenkins joke where he's like, "Well, I see it as this, this, this." We did have those smart guys that were digging through logs. We didn't have proper uh, proper gauge on threat. Like there was a lot of talking in between. So you're able to make dinner like while you're, you know, doing all this, you're able to do like a lot of different stuff um, during it. So it was literally a lifestyle, but yeah, I remember so being the cool guy. Everybody. Well, right. Yep. That, that was it. Important question. Is this before or after you met Mel? This was after. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, well, I got Mel into it too, and she was doing this the same thing, and it was great because we were a team. So what strategy, I'd be like, okay, I'm like, she'd have to come in and talk. I'd run over and start stirring the, you know, spaghetti, and then we just like, I mean, we lived like that forever. Like, I think we've told stories about it on the show before, but that's what it took back back then, and most people couldn't do it. So now you see people with gear, and it's just kind of normal. But before, there was no way you were going to get that gear as a kid. I mean, we didn't let we didn't let squeakers in, like, and the only squeakers they usually got in were the ones that were smart enough not to ever talk on Ventrilo and act like uh, adults. Although at the same time, I will say, in those guilds, it was easy to act like a so-called adult because everybody was using gamer words all over the place. Like, it was actually yeah. pretty fucking gross. So it's like, and you had to put up with those people because there was, there wasn't an abundance of people that could put 40, 50 hours a week into raiding. And it servers sucked. are way smaller. Well, to be fair, it's still like that. Like, uh, like I'm in bleach right now and there's who in wrath and, uh, those are, if you guys know anything about those guilds, they're not, uh, they're not safe spaces. But, uh, um, my favorite one is the Salad Baker speedrun on Nax on Classic Proper like three years ago in the video that they submitted to the leaderboards. At the end of it, it was, there was one guy that was like, I am tired of this bleep of a boss. He dropped an emblem in the middle of the submitted <laughs> video. Dude, on, on private servers, it was so common. The Europeans just... Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, their, it's their regular language for some reason. Eastern Europe is a whole different planet, brother.
Oh yeah. And the, um, I can't believe how racist like the Scandinavian people can be even towards each other, like Denmark versus Sweden and stuff like that. Like if you, if they get riled up, like they'll just, they'll go at it. Not the right kind of way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I was lucky back in the day. Cause my deep voice, I was like 13 and I was playing a resto shaman. And so I would like talk once a year and they would be like, um, They'd be like, oh, you're probably like 18 or something. And I was in an adults only guild and it was like me and one other kid who were like undercover and we just wouldn't tell anybody. See, Mel had. So I had the problem. I still stuttered really bad, especially when I was nervous. And I always got nervous talking to 40 people on Ventrilo. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I Everybody was like, did back uh, in the day. Hey, guys, uh, you know, and that was back when I. I used to talk with my lungs instead of my throat. Like, and that was one of the biggest parts of me stuttering because I'd always be just pushing air out while I was talking. Then I'd just run out of air. Yeah. But, yeah, but so I stuttered, which was rough for me, but Mel was a girl. And Mel was the only girl in our in our vanilla 40-man uh, um, um, raid. And she, we got kind of lucky there because... The, the the second guild lead, the like second guy in charge was the guy that brought us in and he thought it was really cool that she was a girl. So he protected her, right? Like people couldn't like fuck with her. But then I remember by the time we got to Wrath, like she was one of three of three girls in our group. And boy, we had this one mage who was the best on this on this on the server, but he would try to go at Mel and then I'd go back on him and I was like the second highest DPS in the freaking guild and fucking they just let it happen. They just let us fight and wouldn't freaking stop him from being just completely chauvinistic to her and saying the most nasty things during raid. Ugh, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that crap anymore. It's gotten a lot better. I know guys, it's not perfect, but it's kind of a lot better. If you play you would never end it. Oh, really? I mean, like, it goes nicer over time, but, like, EU people are still pretty wild. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. All right, well, we don't have a ton of time left, so let's go into... <sighs> Bobby, we need to have a talk about this World of Warcraft classic. Do I look like I know what a WoW token is? All right, we got about... We uh, got about fifteen minutes we could push, um, but something I wanted to talk about is I'm, the damage and stamina bloat. Um, I really so the stamina they've added in STV and in uh, B BGs. I feel like just needs to be in open world too. But then we already have stamina bloat in open world as well, and like right now. The best food, the, the, I'm just going to give one example of a problem this could bring up in the 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 future. We're doing MCD DPS numbers at level 40. And then also the stamina, our stamina is double than what it should be. So the best food I could get is 1,300 and, and something over 30 seconds. But I'm sitting here on my warrior with 3,500 stamina. And that means like three times dream... Or, eating to get full health and luckily healers are nice enough to heal you up but mana is even worse isn't it like i don't play a a really mana class at the moment because with the new like with the new aura or the new form or what the hell do they call them for stands for hunters like you just switch to that for a couple of seconds and then switch aspect. back yeah aspect of the viper really is just you're drinking at this point you're just standing but for for like mel has to drink three times to f to fill her mana and that that this is all going to be a huge problem what do you guys think about that and then do you see any possible other problems too coming well yeah, as, a, like, as a healer yeah. you kind of play around it if you like doing like speed clearing you're kind of for it otherwise like you can drink and stuff, but like, I, I do not play an intellect stacking healer, so that's kind of... If I had the mana pool of a priest, maybe I would be complaining a lot more, but... If you're sneaking in a couple ticks or drink every pool, it's not too bad. 
Yeah, Van, Van Hooks in, in chat said what I was going to say. He just typed it. <laughs> this, yeah, it's Perspe- it's what I was going to say, too, Van but Hux. I was trying to tee you guys yeah. up. I mean, because like I, I went on my way to get like the uh, the fruitcake, the holiday fruitcake, yeah. and the um the shit from Lunar Festival, the festival dumplings. I went out of my way to get as many of those as possible because I knew that this was going to be a fucking problem. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird that that kind of stuff is tied to a seasonal event. I don't understand why you wouldn't just make it. Um, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where like on the drawing board, I feel like I could could have just been like, wait. Aren't people going to have like way more mana? Should we buff the water? You know, I feel like it's a question that should be asked, but uh, I don't think they have enough time to address it. So we just kind of got to deal with it. I think part of it is. Put on the supply logistics. Nobody does that thing. Put the water there. That's not a bad idea. Give a reason to, to do that. I feel like the, like, it's a very vanilla thing to have item progression in the same way that like skill progression works too, where like, you know, you look at your, your vendor waters, you know, every, every level that ends in a five, you get a new water. Um, and it's a you know higher numerical value. If they switch it to percent mana, then like that stuff would basically be irrelevant. And like, you know, wh- what do you, what do you do? Make each successive one, a higher percentage of your mana or something like that. Like it's, it scales better when you have a higher mana pool, but like the lower versions of it, like will stay shitty like for for example like right now we have moonberry juice but like every once in a while i'll just have a stack of nectar just chilling just in case because it's cheaper and sometimes i don't need all of the mana that moonberry juice would give me sometimes i'm i'm at like 80 percent. i just want to top off and i don't want to waste the moonberry juice so i'll just drink a nectar instead like if you do that with the percent based ones then it's like it's not actually going to help at all because it's still percent based like (laughs) Yeah, I don't, I mean, just my opinion, I don't think min-maxing that is, like, core vanilla gameplay. I'd be okay if that just went away, but I don't, I hate having mana, so I hate, like, mana-based gameplay. Same, yeah, that's why I play Rogue. Like, Rogue's the best. The smaller your mana pool is, the stronger the numerical value ones are, and the bigger your mana pool is, the better the percent-based ones are. So if they just had both, probably be fine, right? Like, if you have a giant mana pool, just use the percent-based one. And if you have a small mana pool, like if you're a shaman tank or something like that, and your mana pool is tiny, then just drink the numerical one and you'll be topped at the same time that a percent based person would be. Yeah, that's what yeah, I mean. I see that. If they just added in percent based ones, you'd still be, because like that is a good point. I didn't even really think about it. Like on my druid, I didn't even realize I was still using the food, not the level 25 food on my, but I was feral. So like, I never noticed that I was still using the old water for like a long time. I was just like, oh, yeah, I could use better water. I didn't even think about it because it still, it filled it up fast enough that I didn't care. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like 30 seconds or whatever, no matter what it does, is fast enough. Like, I don't know. I was, that would still feel pretty slow for me. (laughs) Like, Also, there's like there's drink walking, too, that you can do like in a raid. But like sometimes if you're speed clearing or whatever, which is like the time where you would want to be drink walking, sometimes you can't stay out of combat. Like if you if you throw a hot on somebody and then they pull the next pack, you're still in combat because of that. Of the They hot. have to tactically do it. That's why you see them do big pulls and then stop and big pulls and like yeah. they give like, like a spam drink on that. Like, but like as a druid, I don't think it's too bad either because life bloom, like it refunds your mana. So I just put three life blooms on the tank and then I drink in the pool. And like I, I don't have to do anything for a couple of seconds. So I usually don't have life bloom on though. I usually have star search on. So it's not it works. Right and it did get helped. They did help it with priest too, with like uh shadow feed and stuff like that. So yeah, I think it is cool. on their their radar. So but yeah, yeah I think that- it's definitely a valid question about about drinks, though, because of like because it's tied to the health pool thing too. Our health pools are bigger, so the food is less effective because it's numer- It's a static number instead of scaling. Um, I think it'd be interesting if it was like kind of like how some abilities work, where it's like it has a base damage value plus a percentage of your attack power or spell power or whatever. If they did that with food and mana or food and, dr- and drinks as well, I think that would be decent. Like it has a base value plus 
a certain percent of whatever your total mana pool is, I think that would be a decent compromise instead of just hard swapping to purely percent based. So if they did that, one thing I do, one problem I do see with it is just for the the money sink aspect of it, it would either have to be like certain food works from level 15 to 20 to 25, but then after you're 26, that percent food no longer works for you. There's a more expensive one up here that's the same percent, but now for the higher level. Or you just tack it on and just have that same food's price go up as you go up. You see what I'm saying? If I were a betting man, I think we're just going to get a mesh table next year and they're going to put something like that in there. But then Maybe. at that point, then we always have to have a mage. I don't like that shit either. Good. <laughs> you just park one outside the raid. That is what Can we you normally did. Without Frost Nova in my life, dude. We didn't have a mage up. in our groups till. I mean, we didn't have a mage for the first like four lockouts. And I got our my groups. boy Josie now. I I just brought up Moonbear Juice and Wildhead just to as an as just to see the base like amount of mana that it restores is 1992 mana over 30 seconds. That's way lower than I thought for some reason. I did. Yeah. So like. I don't Even know, I like an I, average guild geared healer would have like at least 3k. Yeah, for sure. Like I have I have like 3400 or something like that. So I would need if I'm starting at zero, I'd have to drink. I would have to start to drink three times to fill my mana bar. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if it was like if Moonberry Juice or just any of them were like whatever the current number is in the game, if it was that is the base value plus like, I don't know, 30 percent of your total mana. If that was what it restored over the time instead of just the base value, I think that would be a decent compromise. But I don't know if there's that's a perfect a, solution. That's confusing, but really good su suggestion. You just have to, for normal people, you just have to convert it to a number that they see on their their screen. Right, exactly. But I like that a lot. Like I like, like that it a lot. Continues to scale, and it can, the base value would still stay the same. Like refreshing spring water, ice cold milk, melon juice, uh, sweet nectar, moonberry juice. Like all of those would still have the same base value they currently have, but they would all have. I don't know. Maybe even have it have an increasing amount of scaling as you level up, or something like that. But like you know, if you're that's the best so you idea. You still I've heard. want the best one you can get, but also you don't have to drink f fucking four of them to fill your mana bar. That's my favorite. I should say my favorite idea that I've heard. Not best. We don't know what the best is here, guys. We're talking about opinions. Where they make a bad. hat that has the two cans on the side and you just drink two at the same time? I like where this <laughs> man's going. Yep. Just have there that be your permanent helm. Just have it at all times. Yeah. Like 60 MP5. Dude. Oh, why is the Budweiser beer helm not in the game, guys? A grand. Also, Get where's our that. mohawk Tim. grenades? Sorry. <laughs> not enough mohawk. All right, well, what other problems can you see in the future? I mean, we uh, so the damage is like crazy, right? But we already heard that, that Molten Core is going to be a 20-man raid. So that's already a huge... Like, if they just don't change Molten Core at all... And have it. And by the way, guys, this was my idea before, before even Phase One started. But uh, does that does that do enough? Just have a, I don't know, maybe like if we're like doing just, double the damage, why not just have the amount of people in the raid? That would, <laughs> it would everything would take the same amount of time. I don't know. Did Any you guys other? get to see somebody split raiding Nomer yet? I didn't see people do trying to fight by Nomer yet. I watched Sars video. And then I watched uh, Scotty J and Go after their most recent, not most recent, but after one of their podcasts, they watched a little bit of me and a lot of Cat and Amber Kit Cat was doing their speed run. I think they got 10th at the time. Yeah, Kat, when they got Kat was in like an 18 minute number, like right after she got off the show. Yep. And me and Table were looking for people 18 minutes into our run because we couldn't find a pug. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. But, um, yeah, but what's your point about that, though, about watching the speedruns? I think our question is for you, uh, Sam Medina. Did I make a point? I don't know. Somebody you no, were asking you, about. Speed yeah, <laughs> you just asked if we watched any of the speedruns. Like, is there a reason? Yes. Is oh, there? no. I, I was wondering if you saw them because I didn't see anybody. Because I think the electrocutioner, and I think that's the main problem with Nomer. Like, you need six people, kind of. So, 
like an exclusive. Oh, you're talking about uh, seeing if anybody has five mana. Yet. I don't think okay. you can five mana. Oh, can you? okay. I I Unless heard have, speed like, run. Yeah, my the bad. only thing I can think of is to have is your like have more than one priest, and they both have just like all of them have dispersion on, and whoever's about to double soak dispersions to not die from the double one. That's the only thing I can think. Yeah, of. because even with a nature pot, you get one shot. Yeah. So you need a nature pot and dispersion, probably, and a shield. I didn't even think about them screwing over the people that like to do, like, the five man clears. I didn't even think about that. That's a mechanic you can't really beat with gear. Well, I don't think they really care, because the Lord Kelrith is still... You can't solo BFD just because Lord Kelrith will put you in the sleeping zone and then reset. So oh, it's not right. like they, like... I, I don't think they care what if you have about a pet? those people at all. It, it goes with you. Okay. And if you summon a guardian, it goes with you too. It just, you know, because it's your, like, character. You need, like, another character in there. Or I guess you need at least two other people because it sends it down sucks two too. people at a time. Yeah. Same thing with not being able to solo SFK because as soon as Aragal mind controls you, he resets as well. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't think they... Maybe they've seen like a tweet or like a Reddit post about it, but I don't think they're doing anything about that at all. all right. Well, guys, unfortunately, I think we could talk more, but unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show. Me and two of these guys have to get to our raid, and I got to get it going. So Home we time. have to shut this down. I'm going to start ending us out here as soon as I can pull up my stuff to say. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at WC Reloaded. You can follow the Masters Buttons Network at the Mash Network. We want you to email us if you want to tell us something. That's WCRpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to join our Discord, it's warcraftreloaded.com slash, slash Discord. Help us with podcast ratings on iTunes and Spotify. Um, thank you to our new tank uh, patron in, in Braxton um, and... Yeah, uh, help us by leaving comments on the YouTube. The YouTube's new, but at the same time, it's okay. Like, the YouTube's kind of like a pet project, guys. Like, it really isn't that big of a deal, but it's kind of nice. But as long as Your you guys keep could be listening. In comment of the week. Yeah, I feel bad because the, the listeners that are on iTunes and Spotify are like the guys and 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 gals although i've seen the majority of our people are male listeners but either like vast majority but uh either way like i want to help them out with like a comment of the week but all i can do is like you can leave some comments on spotify at different questions that that asks it automatically asks what did you think of this episode if we see a good one there we'll pull that up same with iTunes. if you leave a review um, we could like read that, but, uh, yeah, that's basically where, yeah, help us out with whatever you want to do. Just go into Walmart. And yell Warcraft reloaded for life, baby. Google it. Um, we on a boom box and going through the <laughs> apartment block and just play the whole podcast in there. Yeah. Just like the ending scene of, uh, of, uh, I, uh, oh God. Ready player one. You're holding up the boom box. We're not going to take it. I thought you were going to say, say anything. <laughs> All right. Table, where can we find you? Actually, Kipso, where can we find you? We need to give him a chance to like re re regain. Uh, K-I-P-P-Z-O everywhere. Um, I mostly make YouTube videos, so check that out. Check out my Rogue Trash Skip Guide video if you want to skip some trash. You look like a Chad while doing it. Stan, where can we find you? At San Medina on YouTube. It has an N in between the A and the M. It is S-A-N Medina, like in M of Medina. Uh, just Google something, salt face two guys, and you, I'm going to show up there. I, my profile picture has a catfish on it. <laughs> you like fish? <laughs> and Table, where can we find you? Uh, I'm on YouTube at Table Slam and on Twitch at Table underscore Slam. And yeah. Been, awesome. Haven't really been posting a lot lately, but I'll got a couple things in the works right now. And guys, as long as they send me their links, I'll have all the links in the just dis, the description below. No matter what platform you're on, so 
if uh, you want to just scroll down to there and click that. But you can find me on Twitter at Blazin underscore Bob. That's B-L-A-Z-Z-I-N underscore B-O-B. You can find me on Twitch at Blazin Bob. We're going to get out of here, guys. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Behave. Thank you very much for checking out Warcraft Reloaded Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. (laughs) 